you have 11 board members here so far, is that correct? Okay, great. So let's let's get started. I, I have to confess that I need to change things a little bit around. Uh, Carrie, I just tried to call you. So I wanna change a couple of things on this on the schedule. We we will go uh, we will go into a regular board meeting and I would like to elect uh, a vice chair first uh, to change the meeting. I'll go into executive session with you guys and we'll start with just the board. I for personal reasons I'm I'm gonna have to leave. Yeah, so we'll do just the first part at the executive session that I have all of the materials. And then, uh, Carrie, I'm sorry to put this at the last minute with you. I just sent you some information, um, but my dad is in the hospital, so I need people. Oh, so sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So if we could call the meeting to order at 5.02. And we're going to move the agenda a little bit and bring the governance part up and elect a vice chair to have a nomination. Is Jonas with us? I'll nominate Kari Bradley. Thank I'll you. second. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, <laughs> Jonas. So Scott nominates and Chris seconds. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you, Kerry, for your willing to serve. Um, and now, could I have a motion to go into executive session, please? So moved. I'll second. A second, and the executive session is legal matter, negotiations, and superintendent evaluation. Uh, Brian, we're gonna start just the board together, and then you and Carla can go in, please. Thank you. Okay. Do we need the vote floor? Uh, yes, all those in favor of going to executive session, please say aye. 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 I'm sorry, but can everybody hear me now? Yes, now we can yes. hear okay. you, Jonas. All right. Welcome, everybody. I'm going to start the meeting. Um, our chair, uh, Floor Dio Smith, had to leave. So um, I, as your newly elected vice chair, will be um, facilitating tonight. And uh, please bear with me, I wasn't prepared to do this. So um, 3.1 reception of guests. Thank, welcome everybody, thank you for being here. We're gonna move right into 3.2 public comments. We have 15 minutes allocated for this and um, we're gonna really try to stick to that. We've got a very busy agenda. Um, and so will someone remind us what are our expectations around public comments? What, what, what do we allocate per person? Um, hi, Kari, I, I can speak to that. I just wanted to confirm we're doing public comment before we're doing the social justice. I just, I'm not, I moved my agenda. I, I thought Floor had said the Black Lives Matter was first and we had some people to speak to us on that. I'm just checking. Um, you, you know, I, I she sent me some emails, but I haven't had a chance to look at them. I, I just walked into this. Does anybody else have that understanding? Yes, she said the yes. students would be ready at six o'clock at um, U32. Yeah. yeah. And that, and, and just to be clear that we've invited them to, to speak to us. Uh, so that's not part of public comment. And so then we can, then we'll move into public comment on more generally is how I understood it. Okay, thank you. I apologize, Stephen. Then I would request that we make no decision until after public comments. Okay, so this would just be the presentation portion and question and answer. That's what I would ask. Allow them to present now to be mindful of their time, but we won't make a decision until after we've, I have no idea if anyone wants to say anything in public comments or not, but I don't wanna have a presentation and us make a decision and then have people waiting in public comments that wanted to say something it would be inappropriate. Sounds like a good idea. Anybody um, concerned about that? Or no, nope, completely that? agree. Jonas, good. Okay, so we'll do that. We're going to rearrange the agenda and start with 4.2.1 presentation, uh, Black Lives Matter flag raising request. Um, Brian, are you introducing this? Uh, yes, so uh, basically what's happened is we've had a student group, uh, uh, Black, Latin, Asian, and many more, uh, and they've, they've uh, applied for 
a uh, display of the Black Lives Matter flag, which is currently being flown at U32 Middle and High School. Uh, the request is beyond the end of the school year. Uh, and and uh, to, to let everyone know in the public, according to our policy, which is included in this packet, the school board is to make it, make, is to consider and make a decision regarding this application. I have checked with legal counsel uh, and uh, to review the application and all of the um, requirements for our policy from uh, the student group that submitted this application have been met. Uh, and so, uh, and it's also, uh, it's also students, the other group that's also, it's been two groups actually, uh, it's also, also the student seeking uh, justice uh, group as well uh, that has helped uh, uh, put this application together. Uh, I also understand that if you look at the flag policy, if, uh, if you look on bullet, if you look on page eight of your packet and uh, you look at bullet point, bullet point five, uh, it says the flag shall remain on the school flagpole through the end of the school year and, and shall then be removed unless the board elects a different time frame. Uh, so I think uh, the application from the, the two student groups, uh, from what I've been uh, told, has been timely because I think uh, even though the U32 board had made this decision uh, three years ago, close to three years ago, uh, and the U32 board is no longer, um, uh, it's, it's no longer a, 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 a governing body, the, the question comes down to is uh, this board has not been officially asked and I think that the other piece of it is the time frame that the student groups want. I think they want to make sure it's not removed. Uh, and if you uh, look at the application and it's speaking with the U32 administration, uh, if the board does grant it, they, I think they would also be very open to having an opportunity to do a flag raising ceremony at the start of next school year. Okay, thank you. So I, I take it we have some um, guests um, that are prepared to speak to us about their proposal. Krista, would you like to go? I would, thank you. Um, and then I'm really excited. I have a couple students here. Some of our original members are back. Um, so I just wanna say, hi, my name is Krista D and I'm a teacher, I'm an art teacher at U32. And I'm also the, one of the diversity advisors for our middle school and high school BLAMs. I want to say that I'm so honored to be here and have this moment to reflect on and celebrate all the work that has happened since Blam first attended a school board meeting, which was over three years ago when we first requested to raise the Black Lives Matter flag. So much progress has happened to our community since that day. I'm excited to see that some of the school board members we originally worked with are here. You engaged in thoughtful dialogue with our students and supported raising the flag. You are part of this celebration. Your support in raising the Black Lives Matter flag told our students that they are valued. And so much good came from that. I'd like to share just a few things that happened since then. First off, every single one of the original six members of BLAM became strong leaders in our school when previously they felt harassed, silenced, or ignored. These students led hard conversations with large groups of students and showed up over and over to help students understand why Black Lives Matter and in turn why they matter. They worked with teachers at U32 and went into the elementary schools so that, the, the, that teachers could understand why teaching diversity is important and how they can make students of color feel like valued members of the school community. They worked with students at Doty and successfully taught kids how to be upstanders. Some of the members of BLAM presented to every superintendent in the state of Vermont about their experience and on the importance of supporting Black Lives Matter. And most importantly, they left a legacy at U32. New members are joining, teachers are involved and are excited to teach diversity. We are endlessly supported by our administrators to make space for this hard work. And the students of color feel like they have a voice. I'm very thankful to everyone at U32 and for everyone's support. And I am proud to say that two of our original BLAM members, leaders are here, and they're gonna explain to you why they think that the Black Lives Matter flag should remain up at U32 and why it's important to them. Um, we're going to start with Letitia, and then that will be followed by Gabby. 
Leticia, are you here? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, hi, I'm Leticia Montgomery, and um, three years ago, I and other um, members from BLAM stood in front of the school board requesting to put the Black Lives Matter matter flag up to show the school and the community that U32 is an accepting and safe place for students of colors to come in and to feel welcome. We stood in front of not just the school board, but also our peers, and many of them were against us. I don't think people understand how hard the process was and how much work went into it. You all may think that it ended or it got better just because the flag got put up, but the sad reality is that it just got more hidden. Not even a week ago, my little sister, who is a student here going into ninth grade, received a video of two boys who were um, calling a girl uh, an N-word lover with a hard R. This is why it's so important to have the flag up because it is a reminder to every student when they walk into the school that racism isn't welcome or tolerated at U32. And that's all. Awesome, and now Gabby, are you here? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, hi, I'm Gabby Calderon. I was a part of the class of 2018, an original member like Leticia. Um, on March 28th, 2018, I stood before the school board and spoke as to why the Black Lives Matter flag should fly at U32. Now, a little over three years later, I'm here again speaking as to why it should remain at my now alma mater. When I spoke the first time, it was a call for action. It was a call for attention to minorities and racial injustices they face, not only in the world, but within the walls of U32. The Black Lives Matter flag meant to me and my fellow BLAM members acceptance and steps towards the right direction of educating others on biases. When the flag was raised, raised, a sense of hope came, a hope that conversations would begin, learning would be encouraged, and minority voices would be heard. Now more than ever, the U32 community needs the, this flag to remain. With the conviction of George Floyd's killer and the implementation of Juneteenth as a federal holiday, we as a society need to keep pushing forward. The flag staying up not only is a reminder of how far we have come, but most importantly, how far we still have to go. The Black Lives Matter flag is about human rights. It is not political. It means you hear the voices of those who have been wronged. It means you stand with those who face injustices every day, those who are judged solely based on the color of their skin. Without the flag, U32 remains silent to what is going on today and how student lives are being impacted. The flag is the voice of your students, one that should not be taken away. Thank you. So great to hear your voices. Let's see, Meg Allison is gonna take it from here. Well, thanks, Krista, Leticia, Gabby. You have definitely created a legacy amongst your, the students at U32 and it lives on. Um, hello, board. I, I'm, I'm very honored to be here tonight with Krista and our students. I'm um, at U32 and I am the co-founder and co-creator of a space called Seeking Social Justice. And I wanna give a shout out to all the students who have been showing up all year, both in middle school BLAM and SSJ because we've had to create spaces outside of the school day to do this work and they've been showing up. I have three students who are unable to make it tonight, um, but I have short statements to read from them. Eva Goodwin is a rising 12th grader and an active member of SSJ. She writes, the Black Lives Matter flag is important to have flying at U32 because it is the way to acknowledge the racial injustices and inequality that have occurred. While it is not a solution to these problems of racial injustice, it is a visible sign that we, as a school community, are committed to equality. Having the Black Lives Matter flag flying on our campus can help spur further conversations and activism surrounding the problems of racial justice in our country. From AJ Moore, who is a rising 11th grader, AJ writes, I think that the Black Lives Matter flag is much more than politics. It represents spreading love and power to a group of people who have been in a society where their values, safety, and well-being have been disregarded and violated continuously over a long period of time. Putting up the Black Lives Matter flag brought nothing but positivity to our school and the BIPOC community within it. Having this flag flown promotes nothing but inclusiveness and support for the people who have not had either of those things and it is the bare minimum our school should be doing to give that to them. 
And lastly, Jack Thompson, rising 11th grader. He writes, although the raising of the flag will constitute the school board endorsing its message, I ask of you not to think of this as the school board raising a flag, but as the students raising a flag. It was the students who advocated for it, the students who gathered support for it, the students who have made the case for committing to a future where no one is left out. As a school district that holds global citizenship as a necessity for graduation, I hope you will recognize and support your students participating in a direct democracy and standing up for what they believe in. Thank you for your time. Okay. Well, thank you, Krista, Letitia, Gabby, and Meg. Are there any questions from the school board for our presenters? If not, I think we will end there and return back to this for discussion and um, a vote um, after we've done the public comments. Okay. So thank you very much and stay tuned. All right, so we're gonna go back to 3.2 and public comments. Can, can someone remind the group what our expectations are around individual commenters and the limits? Yes, Ari, I can do that. Hi, everybody. Um, so um, the steering committee uh, met last week and we uh, you'll note on the agenda that we are gonna be timing public comments tonight. So everyone will have uh, one and a half minutes, and we will go for 15 minutes. So that will mean 10 people will be able to speak at the beginning of the meeting. If there are more people who want to speak, we'll hold additional public comment at the end of the meeting. Um, we are going to be really strict about that time, and microphones are actually going to get muted when one and a half minutes is up. So um, it's, it's going to be pretty disciplined. Um, I want to remind people that there are lots of ways to, um, to seek our attention. And um, we welcome your emails. We welcome letters from you. We are many of us doing meetings in our communities. So there are lots of ways uh, for us to engage with you, um, but we are gonna be disciplined about this particular mode of communication. Um, Jim uh, Garrity, uh, who is does uh, all the technology for our meetings is gonna be, I believe, uh, displaying the timer so that you can see how much time you have and uh, so that you'll have some warning um, when, the, when your time is up. Um, and then the last thing I would say is given the limits, I would really urge you not to read a long statement because I don't think, this is just my advice, <laughs> I don't think you'll make it through. And so I really urge you to, to give us the highlight of what brought you to, to provide some public comment today and, and what action you're hoping that uh, this board will take or perhaps not take, okay? So that's my understanding of what's happening. I can see some hands raised. Kari, do you want me to call on people or were you gonna do that? How do you wanna handle it? I can no longer see you. <laughs> yeah, so um, I've got a list going. I'm just gonna go in the order okay. that, that I saw them come Great. up. So first okay. up is Ellen and then Amy. So Ellen, please. Thank you. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Ellen Dorsey and I was drawn to this district in 2001 fresh from graduate school and brimming with idealism. This dynamic, innovative, and caring educational community became a conductor and ground for what was then boundless energy. I started out as a middle school and high school math teacher before becoming an instructional coach in 2014. In this capacity, it's been my privilege to collaborate with dedicated educators from across our six schools. To me, in this work, we have always been one district and promoting voice and agency has always been central to who we are and how we do things embedded in our roots. I aspire to be a positive person. So instead of voicing my concerns, I would like to use my voice now to share my hopes for this district to which I remain utterly devoted. I hope we see that if we value growth, we need to tend to the health of our roots. That if we value equity, we need to distribute and at times disrupt power. That if we want real improvements for our students, we need to base our planning on a fully collaborative process and not bullet points from an ill-conceived audit. I urge the board to organize a community forum to begin to restore the trust 
that has been lost within our educational community this year and help us move forward because we are better together. Thank you. Thank you, Ellen. So uh, Amy's uh, up and Anne will be next. Hi, my name is Amy Young and I work at Berlin Elementary School as a librarian and tech integration specialist. I want to express my concern about moving forward with the adoption of the new technology policies. I agree that we need the policies, but I want to, the time for more stakeholders, specifically community members, uh, teachers and tech committee members to have input. The tech committee has not been active in this past year and the policies were a surprise to myself and to most of our staff. I would also like us to consider consulting the Vermont School Board Association, um, their sample policies, and consulting our new tech director, Art Klein, before moving forward. I also want to take this time to um, celebrate the work of Washington Central staff members in the last three days of our curriculum camp. Jen Miller Arsenal designed a very valuable agenda, which allowed participants to embrace in some very powerful cur curriculum work. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. So Anne, you're up, and then Madeline, you'll be next. Thank you. Having just completed the two and a half days of curriculum camp, it continues to be an energizing opportunity for district teachers and administrators to work collaboratively on improving district-wide instruction. I'm incredibly appreciative of being able to spend the last two and a half days working with a group that consisted of 50% administrators and 50% teachers. We thrived by practicing and modeling how we know students learn best. I would hate to see this collaborative process disappear just because we received the curriculum audit with recommendations that are prioritized, prior, prior prior sorry, by just one person. All right, thank you, Anne. Madeline, then, then, then Daniel. Daniel. Thank you. Um, so for those of you who, who don't know me, um, I am Madeline Doherty. I teach special education at um, U32. Um, like to start off quickly by saying Black Lives Matter. Heck yes, I really hope that you um, continue to let that flag fly at U32. Um, I firmly support my black students, my black friends and chosen family and hope that that flag stays up until um, racial justice is achieved and it is no longer redundant and the flag is redundant. Um, but more even just as importantly, not more importantly, just as importantly, um, I would like to join in solidarity with my colleagues and other community members who are calling for a public forum to discuss the results of the curriculum management review. Um, even with the report being included in the packet today and with the presentation we got at the last board meeting, um, I am fairly certain that most of us have way more questions than we do answers. Even as a career long educator, um, I found that presentation full of a lot of jargon and hard to wrap my mind around. Um, so I am certain that there's a lot of people who would like to be able to discuss this, not to mention the many concerns you've heard about the validity of the data and the appropriateness of this review during a pandemic. Um, I think that those concerns are valid and I would not want us to take anything from this report at face value. I hope that you allow the public to weigh in through those many forums that Jill mentioned um, before any change. Okay, thank you, Madeline. Uh, Danielle, you're next, and then Daniel will be after. Hi, this is Danielle. Um, first, um, I want to say that as a, a white parent of two Black children in the district, the Black Lives Matter flag means so much to us in terms of uh, welcoming uh, potential safety, willingness, and commitment to social justice. It means something to us, and so please please keep it. And I wanna say thank you to the students who have advocated uh, and made, made this progress, made it happen so far. Um, I Switching to the curriculum review, I also would like the idea of a community forum. I feel greatly concerned that our educators may not be involved in the curriculum management considerations, and I'd like to open that up. Thank you. Thank you. So Daniel, followed by Elsa. Hey, thank you. 
Um, I want to start off with the word educate. In case you folks don't know, uh, educate comes from ex, means out, and um, the, the duker means to lead, so we lead people out to the open. And it's recently come to my attention um, that there's an interest in limiting uh, access to the internet at school. Um, as somebody who tends to work many hours past the school uh, closing time, I've noticed uh, members of the community who come up to the school for 10, 20 minutes at a time and use the internet. Uh, if we are truly leaders in the outwardness, the community, uh, we need to leave that internet open. It's an act of equity, and it's also an act of education. Uh, many members in our community don't have access to self-service or internet service. Um, second of all, um, using hard and fast rules to create a system is one which creates ignorance and an inability to critically think for themselves about what is right. And I believe that does go against our mission as educators and a school district. Uh, it leads us away from American principles of freedom, and it leads us towards on a slippery slope, despotism, when we can no longer make critical choices. While guidelines are helpful, um, education is about access. I just want to toss it out there in terms of a moral standpoint. Thank you for the time. Thank you. Elsa, uh, and up next will be Christine. Hi there, I'm Elsa Ingpen. I am a parent of four children in the district, one of whom graduated this year. I'm also the school health director in a neighboring school district. Um, I attended this meeting tonight because I was intrigued and slightly concerned that the superintendent put out notice to parents in more than one message. Um, I'm honestly not sure. I know one was email. I think I saw another one on a um, school supported social media account encouraging parents and community members to come to this meeting specifically because of the issue of the Black Lives Matter flag. And it's curious and concerning to me that there was such an unusual effort to ask people to come for that issue while there was no comment of the fact that this meeting would also be addressing a massive curriculum um, review and potential changes in our children's instruction. Um, I, I hope that the board and the superintendent can address why this issue of the Black Lives Matter flag was felt to be so different and unique from other issues that are raised at board meetings on a regular basis. I've been a parent in this district for 12 years and that doesn't happen very often. Um, that said, I'm in full support of the Black Lives Matter conti flag continuing to fly and um, certainly hope that that is continued without any further fuss or need for vast community input. Thank you. Christine and then Holly, you'll be next. Hi, I am uh, Christine Chartrand. I am a, I've been a teacher at U32 for the past nine years. I also am part of the Callis community. I am on here and I don't usually talk up about things, but I did want to mention that um, the upcoming change to the uh, schedule at U32 feels incomplete to me. Um, right now you'll see that point 10 states that the change, this last minute change to our schedule um, will most likely impact many of our teachers who have children in childcare. Across the state, child, uh, child cares have, have been having trouble securing employees and are therefore closing at 3 p.m. Um, and there hasn't been a solution proposed in this proposal for a new change of a schedule. And I want you to consider before approving something like that to consider the impact it will have on our teachers. I currently have a contract with a school to send my children there and I will be losing out on a lot of money if I have to get them out of that school and will most likely cause a lot of trauma to my children who are planning on going where they're going. Um, and to consider potentially waiting another year and giving families and teachers enough time to prepare for this change in the schedule. Thanks. Thank you. Holly and then Meg, please. Uh, good evening. Thank you to the board. Um, my name is Holly Lane. My husband, Dan, and I live in East Montpelier. We have four children, one who is uh, already graduated and three others who are still in the district. Um, my husband sent a, a letter earlier today, and I'm just going to read an excerpt from it. This went to the board earlier. Um, 
and I will try to keep it brief. Um, tonight, we asked the school board to facilitate a community forum as suggested in your board norms appended to the agenda to gather community input about the direction and the, that the district seems to be headed in under the current leadership. Although the board service is widely appreciated, there is growing concern that the school board is failing to responsibly shepherd district resources by continuing to support a superintendent who has lost the confidence of a majority of educators and alienated many community members. For instance, it's our understanding that the superintendent has formally reprimanded some administrators who have respectfully disagreed with him. If this is the case, it seems to violate the spirit, if not the exact language of the district's B40 policy on non-retribution and retaliation. Why are these experienced, highly valued voices being retaliated against? The district is hemorrhaging talent across all levels and losing its distinctive identity as a desirable district with well-rounded values. We also suggest that the board rejects accepting today's curriculum review report since so few educators in the district seem to trust the process used or even value the review since it's premised on a faulty deficit review during the COVID Okay, thank you, Holly. We did receive that email from you late earlier. Uh, Meg, you're next. Thank you for this opportunity. I have served six years in our district as a teacher librarian at U32, and I'm here to speak directly about the eight technology policies currently in the process of getting read, reviewed, and approved by the board. I have served on our district's technology committee for my entire tenure, except for this year, because there was no tech committee. And I served on the hiring committee for our new director of technology this spring, for the request of my building principal. I'll get right to the point. I'm very uncomfortable with the process of passing any IT policies, never mind eight of them, under the leadership of an interim IT director and without the input of a district technology committee. We have a new director starting July 1st, and I would like to urge the board to put the brakes on these policies until Mark Klein begins his work here, selected unanimously after a competitive but inexplicably long drawn out process. I would hope that our shared understanding of an interim role should maintain and support systems already in place and not lead changes in policy. I have serious concerns about the process and urge the board to hit pause until after July 1st to ensure that our new director of technology has been given the chance to weigh in. I appreciate the work the policy committee has done to advance these policies. Hitting pause will only ensure that the work reflects the expertise of all our districts, technology leaders, all hired through a competitive process Hitting pause supports our district's purported goal to create a culture of openness, trust, and integrity. Thank you. Thank you. So that's 10. Um, I see three more hands up. I think we saved a little bit of time at the risk of running afoul of the steering committee. I'm, I'm inclined to let the, the last three go and just- I, please, please. I agree, Kari, and I think we did save some time. Some people okay, were short. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so Jessica followed by Kyle and then Adam. Hi there, can you hear me? Yeah. Great, thank you. My name is Jessica Cobb. I am the literacy specialist at Rumney, uh, Rumney Memorial School. I am also a um, resident of East Montpelier and therefore a resident of the district. Um, I'm speaking today um, specifically to the technology policy and my concern that um, teachers would be uh, in violation of the policy to conduct any personal business while at school. It is my understanding that I, under contract, get a half hour for lunch, and during that time, I get to do what I need to do for myself, including eat. Um, I have uh, been battling uh, through a life-altering injury over this uh, past two years, and um, I need to, from time to time, be in touch with caregivers. And if I am unable to make any phone call um, during my personal time, during lunchtime, it absolutely gets in the way of me taking care of myself. We have a district that has done a lot for self-care, and now we are being told that we are in, unable to do anything personal during a personal time of our day. This feels like it's meant to be intimidate to intimidate and to not be treated as a professional. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. Uh, Kyle and then Adam. Kyle. Um, 
All right, can you can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Um, first of all, thank you for taking up the uh, student initiative uh, to continue flying the Black Lives Matter flag. I think that's an important thing to do, and I hope you'll support it. Um, I also just wanted to talk to the curriculum review issue, and I I spoke to this in in depth a few weeks ago, but that was late in the meeting after the superintendent had already dropped off of the call. So I hope he's listening now. Uh, I, I have three children in the Washington Central District, one at U32, two at Romney, and um, everything I've seen about this curriculum review uh, indicates to me that it was poorly timed, it was not done well, and it did not take into account uh, teacher viewpoints, staff viewpoints, or the members of the community. So it's time to take a pause. Uh, we do not need to get the superintendent's response to this. We have that. He filed a letter to the editor, to the Tar Times Argus, that clearly indicates he thinks he knows better than everyone else. Uh, the viewpoints you, the board, need to hear right now are from community members, and most importantly, teachers and staff, they're the ones who know how to take care of our kids. Thank you, Kyle. And Adam, you get the final word. Board members, I encourage you not to accept the curriculum review. It should not have been conducted dur during a pandemic. It doesn't contain an accurate picture of instruction. No online lessons or socially distanced lessons should be judged by previous standards of engagement. We are all novices at this modality. I encourage you to limit the power of the superintendent to terminate programs. The programs that could be the response of classroom, instruction of a foreign language, or an artist in residency. Each school has unique characteristics and we need to preserve individual programs. The superintendent can determine programs for instruction in math, language arts, and science. I suggest the board mandate a committee approach to these decisions. Strategic initiatives come and go, and often little of them remains after a few years. I invite you all to study the three-year literacy initiative from 2008 to 2011 with a truly comprehensive literacy audit, free coursework, embedded coaching, and mandatory professional development for all administrators, this initiative was empirically sound and well supportive. Before undertaking a major overhaul, why not examine the goals of this outstanding initiative and build on those strengths? Thank you. Thank you, Adam, and thank you everybody for your comments. We really appreciate it. And um, keep in mind, we have those other channels that um, Joe listed off before if you want to get in touch with us. All right, let's move on to 3.3 agenda revisions. I have a couple. One is under the personnel section, we're going to add a motion to authorize the superintendent to enter a letter of agreement. And then we're also at the after the regular meeting, we're going to return to executive session to conduct the superintendent evaluation. Does anybody else have any other agenda revisions? Okay, let's move on then. 4.1 student reports. Are our students here? Oh. Hey, Kari. Kari? Yes. Kari, I, I'd just like to um, make a, um, a statement. I, and I couldn't get in before because I, I was in driving mode, even though I'm at home. Um, to um, all the, the public comments on the technology uh, policies, uh, my name is Chris McVeigh and I'm the chair of the policy committee. Uh, we have, um, uh, as a policy committee the other night, decided not to forward the policies, the technology policies to the board for approval um, with the hope that uh, this extended invitation to the public to join us in our next policy committee um, uh, will be accepted. Uh, we will, we're happy to have a discussion. Uh, the, unfortunately, the public forum or the public, public comment section doesn't provide for the dialogue that developing policies um, can benefit from. So uh, I will send out a notice so that uh, folks know when the next policy committee is and invite you all to attend 
um, because we uh, we value your input. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Craig. Thanks, Carl. I appreciate it. Uh, oh, okay. Um, so just to confirm, neither Towns or Anna is here. That's too bad. I wanted to thank them both for their service this last year and congratulate Towns on um, graduation and uh, wish him well in the future. It was great working with him over this last year. So, um, All right, let's move on to 4.2 superintendent and we'll resume 4.2.1, the Black Lives Matter flag raising request. I think we've heard the presentation. Um, Brian, do you have anything else to say before we start deliberating? Oh, no, I just wanted to uh, thank the uh, student groups uh, that are here today and, our, and the uh, teacher advisors uh, for uh, working so expeditiously to uh, get the application out to uh, the school board for your consideration. And, uh, you know, part of the board, I, th I had a member of the board, uh, uh, one of the members from the public had asked why a letter was sent out, well, uh, to ask people to come to tonight's meeting. It's actually our last bullet point of our policy is the board may invite comment from the community, including students. And that's what we were doing with inviting comment from the community regarding uh, this application. Okay, let's hear from board members. Um, what do you say before we take a vote? Um, and please just raise your hand. Scott, you go first. Um, may I make a motion, Kari? Oh, please, that's very appropriate. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I move that we approve maintaining the flying of the Black Lives Matter flag without interruption. Um, and then understanding that there will be a re-raising ceremony to be organized in the fall of the upcoming school year. I will second that. Can we do a friendly amendment though to extend the term of it that they don't have to come back next year again? Um, Oh, hold on, hold on. Is that okay. a friendly amendment? Um, I, I would I would like to hold off accepting the friendly amendment until um, I, I, Chris has something to say because of the policy. Angle. Right. I would um, offer a friendly amendment that uh, the board's vote is an expression of the board's um, public position um, on Black Lives Matter. Is that accepted? So, um, yes, um, but but that doesn't really that wasn't a comment on what Diane was um, was saying. No, okay, it was not. Um, I actually I I'm inclined to think it's not a bad thing to revisit this every year. Um, it's a reminder. It it doesn't. We have to kind of. Um, focus on the issue anew um, and it doesn't get stale or old hat. I completely agree with Scott. I do too and it would be consistent with our policy um, to have it renewed on an annual basis. All right, can we just, um, Lisa, could you read back the motion please? Yeah, sorry. Um, so Scott moved to approve maintaining the flying of the Black Lives Matter flag without interruption, understanding that there will be a re-raising ceremony in the fall of the upcoming school year. And then um, Chris had suggested an amendment noting that the board's vote is an expression of the board's support of the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, and then Diane's suggestion to amend it to not require the board to reconsider it next year is what's being discussed right now and sounds like that's not going to be part of the motion. That, has, that has not been accepted as a friendly amendment so now we've got a motion on the table um diane and then jonas I, my concern is that i mean we put people through a lot of stress um following this policy and concern that we were potentially a hostile group of of hearing this um, and to me, it also feels like that performing poverty that you, you, you know, it's your responsibility to remind me as a board member of what this issue is. And, and I mean, our students just spoke so incredibly powerfully about this, that to me, it is a strong 
statement that you don't have to bring it back to us. I would love for us to bring this, to talk about this issue and its impact every day that we see um, without it being tied to uh, students having to come forward and ask again, please, may I have some more, sir? Um, and so that's why I would would request it. And and so. Thank you, Diane. Jonas. So I I, I completely hear you, Diane. Uh, I, I you know I think my take is more in in line with Scott um, that you know the nature of this community I think makes it the demographic nature of this community makes it important that we are confronted with this issue every year that we have to wrestle with it that we have to identify why this is important. Um, I also think it's important that we have a policy, right, that requires um, any flag uh, to be reapproved every year. Um, and you know, I think the the you know, Diane, maybe you're entirely right um, that this is that this is an onerous requirement um, for students to do every year. I also wonder if there is value in it, right, both for the presenters and for you know the board and the community as the audience. Um, but what I raised my hand to, you know, and if the motion is to, you know, to extend the term, I will absolutely support that. Um, um, but my, I originally raised my hand to ask Chris to, uh, to, to explain the change in board policy from a couple of months ago um, and to make it, because what the, the, the friendly amendment um, that was proposed to make it clear that this is the board speaking that is embedded in the policy. Um, so I, I, I wonder if Chris, if, if you could briefly describe what that change was. Um, so that change came about um, based on legal counsel and um, having the flagpole not become a public forum. Um, and it's the board expressing um, its uh, sentiments using the flagpole. Um, we're, we're certainly having it rise up to the student population um, but it's really to prevent the flagpole from becoming a public forum in which it, um, from a First Amendment standpoint, could be challenged that others could want to raise flags there. So, Chris, it, 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 would it be fair to say that in, in making sure that the policy says that this is the, the board expressing its values, it gives the board the opportunity to both approve and disapprove of speech, therefore, it would reflect the values of the board and, by extension, the values of the community. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Let's have other comments. Uh, Jill, did I see your hand up? No. Stephen. Um, I'm not going to go into a historical explanation of my background. Um, and I will support uh, the flag being raised again, but I want the, the teachers in the student group um, to hear what I have to say. This is personal. Um, the first paragraph in the third page of the um, presentation, tying a symbol being displayed or not to what I feel I find very offensive. Um, the background that I share is I, I work daily in an environment um, where people are pressured to wear an American flag on their lapel. And if you don't wear an American flag on your lapel, you're viewed as being unpatriotic. Uh, I'm not unpatriotic but I do not wear a flag on my lapel because it, a symbol doesn't reflect what I feel. I think it's very appropriate and something I support wholly in the second paragraph to say the flying of the flag to um, this group of students means this. And I have no doubt that that's what it means. And I agree and support it. But I would, I would respectfully request that you'd not tie a symbol to what my beliefs are. I do not need to display a symbol um, to confirm what my beliefs are. Um, so I would just ask that you look at the language that you used in that paragraph, the second sentence in that first um, 
paragraph. Uh, and I, I, that's all that I'll say on it. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Any other board comments? I think we're ready to vote. Does anybody need, Scott, go ahead. Sorry, Kari, I don't mean to slow us down, but I, I did want to just um, address uh, at least one community member's email that I saw um, regarding, you know, the, the whole all lives matter. And, um, and it relates also to one of the advantages of revisiting the issue uh, every year, because um, this year, thinking about it has, um, has uh, revealed new aspects of it to me. But, but one reason I think that's very important for those who are listening or watching and thinking um, all lives matter is, is so much better. Um, the, the Black Lives Matter is, um, uh, it doesn't bother me um, because, uh, well, for the same reason that, um, that taking care of the widow and the orphan um, doesn't bother me in the Bible. Basically, it's a matter of focusing on that segment of the population that is most apt to be, um, or to get a raw deal and have that be the litmus test for a just society, the proper treatment of that segment of the population. And, and there's, there's really so much more even than that, that um, the uh, symbolic power of the flag and its connection to um, you know, some of the high voltage transmission lines of history and religion, but um, don't need to hear all that. I, I think, though, that it's important to understand that we're not disregarding others in this. Thank you, Scott. Jonathan? Yeah, just very briefly, I just wanted to add that um, I was proud to be on the board uh, for the U32, you know, the U32 school board when this issue first came forward and, and we approved it, and I'm certainly very proud to be in support of it uh, now. And I, and I think that, that uh, even in the fall, if there is to be a, you know, another uh, raising ceremony, so to speak, I think that's a way of, of really um, doing two things at once, which is be, remain consistent with our policy, but also to remain consistent uh, and to show support. And I, th I think it's, it's a ceremonial way for the students to, to, uh, to really show that we support them. Great, Diane. I'll make this quick. I, you know, of course, I'm going to vote to support it. I am frustrated that we are saying again that we'll bring up this topic again in a year when they, we talk about this. And But what I'll do is I'll just make sure we keep putting it on our agenda so that we make sure that we're dealing with the issues that are right in front of us. Um, and again, it isn't up to others to bring it up. It's not the responsibility of others to be educating me. It's my work to make sure that I am doing what is right in my community for all, and especially for those that we have oppressed and harmed for so many years. Great. Thank you, Diane. I, I think we hear you. All right, I think we're ready to vote. Does anybody need to hear the motion one more time? If so, raise your hand. Okay, all those in favor, please say aye or raise your hand. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? So that passes. Thank you very much. Uh, let's move on to 4.2.2, the social justice statement. Brian? Uh, yes, uh, later in, in late May, uh, we, uh, we, the board, our leadership team and I received a uh, document uh, written by some of our staff members who have been taking a, advantage of a class entitled Racial Equity, Intersectional Justice, and confronting bias at school. It was a course for educators, uh, and it was uh, it was the opportunity for educators to get together and uh, take this course. And uh, what they've been doing this year is to they wrote a statement that they've asked the board to adopt. Uh, it's a commitment to humanity and justice. The our ec equity scholar in residence has been teaching this course with, uh, to our educators, and I believe that the hope of the participants in this course 
and uh, in future courses is to continue to push the envelope in this area of uh, equity uh, and uh, making sure that we are advancing the cause of racial equity, uh, social justice, and confronting bias. Uh, and so the uh, wanted to, uh, yeah, I, I, I can read it if you'd like, uh, just so uh, everyone can hear it, but uh, they were asking the board to adopt this, the following statement. And the statement reads as follows. The Washington Central Unified Union School District is dedicated to taking concrete actions that provide a safer and more supportive learning environment that is free of barriers, one that affirms the identity of each of us and acknowledges and celebrates the differences to create a sense of belonging for each person connected to our schools. The school district is committed to creating inclusive educational opportunities that are relevant both historically and culturally, addressing the impacts of bias, prejudice, and discrimination while building more opportunity for us to thrive rather than merely survive. This statement represents a commitment within our school district to acknowledge and end oppression and oppressive systems, to center our full humanity of all in our community, and to keep broadening our perspectives. These identities, including and not limited to race, color, religion, creed, national origin, ethnicity, marital status, family composition, sex, sexual orientation, gender identity, varying physical and mental abilities, and socioeconomic status carry socially constructed meaning and value. Our commitment is to the development of cultural humility and personal growth that is best supported in a climate that respects differences and provides a sense of belonging and inclusion. And uh, the uh, uh, folks uh, uh, listed themselves on the letter, which are on pages 11 and 12 of your board packet, and are asking the board to adopt this uh, statement. Okay, thank you. So would a board member like to make a motion in support of this? Scott? So moved. Um, uh, a second. Actually, what, what I, I'd like to move something a little bit different, if possible. Um, my understanding is that this is to be a board statement, correct? Um, uh, right. My motion, and, and Chris may not want to second it because well, he'll find out in a sec. My motion is that we refer this uh, draft statement to the policy committee um, for its vetting before approval, but with the intent of eventually approving. Okay, so that's a motion. Is there a second? I would second that. Even though you you're the on the policy committee, that's great. You, well, maybe I'll maybe I'll let someone else second then. <laughs> I'll second. If, if that's a conflict. No, 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 I, I'm just teasing. I know. Um, so Scott motion, Chris second. Let's uh, let's discuss. Jill, what are you doing? I think Scott has gotten at the question I was gonna ask, but I, I, I think Scott, maybe the reason you wanna put this into a policy is that I, I was having this very sort of concrete question about where would this live? Like, how would we, like, what does it mean to adopt a statement? It's like, where would we write it down? Where would anyone be able to find it again? So that was, my, regardless of the content, I was a little confused about the, um, just the process of where, where the statement would be. So I think that may be why you're suggesting policy as the, as the, as the vehicle. Great, so uh, I heard the proposal as the policy committee would consider it, not necessarily. Yes, yeah. But this would be something we would ask the committee to consider as part of this. All right. Uh, Scott, did you want to respond to that? Um, sure, yeah. Um, thank you, Jill. Um, you articulated it better than I could. I'm, I'm also noticing that um, the, the, the group of authors um, who did this, uh, who did this draft, consider it a working document. So I figured, ah, let's work on it. Um, it's... Uh, it may, what we're, I think what we'd like to do is to plug into some of what the, um, the educators have been doing in order to get, a, to get a better sense. And I would hope that in keeping with Chris's uh, invitation to have more people join the policy committee, that we would be able to lure some, um, some new faces and voices into that. Great, thank you. Um, Jonas, did I see your hand up? Are you ready to speak? 
Uh, yeah, so my, I was going to ask Scott, you know, why he wanted to, to refer this to policy. Um, you know, I, we've made statements before and approved, you know, letters to various bodies, you know, uh, you know, adding our support, you know, to various things. Um, I see, you know, I see no reason why we shouldn't ap approve this tonight. Um, and, um, and so, so you know, I, I would just like to hear, you know, if there are there are any other, you know, any formal reasons why we should not adopt what looks like a very, you know, carefully crafted and well vetted statement that I think represents the, you know, the, the, you know, where the board is. Scott, I think you have responded to that, but do you have more to say? I, I, I would just maybe, um, I mean, it, it's a, it's a very good statement. It, it's, um, it's clearly written by educators. And, um, and, and that has a lot to speak for it. Um, I'm thinking that if it's a statement by the board, we may want to, um, this is completely at this point speculative, but because the board speaks for the people and to the people, maybe we want to, um, to have it be a, a perhaps, um, pitched in a slightly different way or um, just approach it in a slightly different way. So I, I would say respectfully, um, you know, the, the letter that was crafted by, by you and Dorothy um, about the, you know, the refactoring of the, um, you know, the, the education funding system, um, we, we approved. I think that that you know, addresses the values of the board and of the community. Um, and I think this, this one does it as well. I don't think that letter needed to go to the policy committee or needed uh, further vetting, and I don't think this does either. Okay, thanks, Chris. You're next. Um, um, what the policy committee and then the board as a whole could do, though, is tie these um, um, statements of value to concrete action. Um, and so, you know, I heard Diane earlier saying how she was going to keep bringing up uh, the Black Lives Matter so that we're, it's constantly on our, our plate and bringing it up to ourselves. Um, we, we, the policy committee can look at it and, and with the help of the drafters, uh, perhaps propose concrete, concrete action uh, so that it, it just isn't passed as a statement and goes somewhere else. And um, Jill brought up the, or someone brought up the question of the resolutions. I'm wondering where they do go. Um, where do the resolutions do they is there a repository of, of the resolutions that we have I don't I don't know that they go into policy all the time but okay Chris let's let I, I'd rather defer that question until you know, okay that's, that's fine. for you to so work on if it's that's that's, that's 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 my response <laughs> okay thanks um were there any other comments from the board Stephen so uh, whether it goes to the policy or committee or somewhere else, um, I would like to have an opportunity for the board to speak to and discuss um, this before we vote on it. Um, in, in Jonas, in, in my mind, it's different for me to support um, a letter um, requesting action is different than um, affirming a statement um, of our board that our board haven't, hasn't been involved with the writing of. Okay, thanks, Stephen. I wasn't quite clear what you said initially. You, you, you would like more discussion of this, are you saying, or? Whether it's at the policy committee or not, um, I, I would like to have board discussion. Okay, um, okay. I, I have some questions and input it, and if it needs to be here, can be, but if there's going to be, okay. if the board's going to decide to Got it. take action. So, um, so we have Scott's motion on the table, seconded by Chris, to send this to committee, and and we would see it again if that passes. Any other comments about that motion? Jonas. Sorry, Jonathan. Go ahead. No, Jonathan. <laughs> Yeah, I just I just want to add that that if um, I would support the motion to the extent to send it to the policy committee, I mean, I, I'd be happy to support it. 
uh, you know, uh, passing a resolution or, or, you know, approving this statement as it is, but, but if, if sending it to, and I guess it's sort of conditional, but if sending it to the policy committee and then later for further board discussion does then uh, with the intent of concrete action, changes to the curriculum that include more uh, reading about uh, diversity, equity, all of those things, if it then leads to real concrete action within the school, then I'm all for uh, sending it to the policy committee. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll absolutely second that. I just hope that, you know, this isn't seen as the board being skeptical of the intent or the language. All right. Any last comments? So all those in favor of the motion to send this to committee, please say aye or raise your hand. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? So that passes. Thank you. And thank you, Chris. Um, next item is 4.2.3 COVID update. Brian, is this informational? Is there going to be an action? Uh, no, there's no action here. It's just informational. Uh, just uh, I think the, the big piece of it is, is um, you know, the results of our work are basically asking uh, Elizabeth Worth, uh, one of her last actions uh, of this year was to put this together for you as a kind of a summary of the year in, uh, in a total. Uh, and uh, ultimately, I think the results, the last four bullet points are worth mentioning on page 13, uh, talking about how our schools were open for in-person learning for the entire year. Uh, there were no uh, cases that we know about from our communities that required hospitalization. There were 10 cases that, uh, that required contact tracing in our schools from November 21st through April 13th, and there was no evidence of any transmission of COVID-19 in our schools as a result of these cases. Uh, we uh, did have, we are aware of at least 30 members of our community who did test positive uh, for COVID-19. However, again, uh, this, uh, this uh, did not impact uh, our schools and it did not, uh, there's no uh, evidence that anything like any transmissions happened. So just letting you know, it was a very successful year with the pandemic uh, given everything. And I thought, I thought I really wanted to also just publicly acknowledge Elizabeth Worth, our COVID-19 coordinator, who was just amazing to work with this year. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Yeah, I'd like to express the appreciation for Elizabeth too, uh, and for Brian and everyone in the district for helping to keep everyone safe. It's remarkable that there were no cases of transmission in the schools. Thank you, everybody. Excellent. Uh, Jonathan? Yeah, just briefly, uh, I would second uh, completely what what uh, what was just shared by, by Jonas. I mean, absolutely remarkable uh, what the teachers did, what the administrators, everybody did to keep all the kids safe and each other safe. So thanks to all of you for that. Great. Thank you. Um, before we move on, um, Chris, there's a request to um, publicize the policy committee meeting time. Do you happen to know that now when the committee meets next? Um, I don't, I do not know it now, um, but what I will do is I will public, when it's established, I'll um, public, put it on front porch forum and make sure that it gets on all of the town's front porch forums um, twice. Great, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, so let's move on then. 4.2.4 Curriculum Management Review Report. Uh, this is a requested action item. Um, Brian, would you like to present? Yes, uh, th this is uh, the, the memo on page 14 of your packet. Uh, just gives a bas basically talks about the curriculum management uh, findings. I know uh, Jeff Thunberg, the uh, lead reviewer, uh, presented at our last meeting. Uh, there, there is a way to read the report. It is quite a lengthy report and document. Uh, it takes a while to really chew on it and understand it. Uh, and I, I did give uh, some uh, uh, guidance on where to start and how to read it and where, because it's, it's not a straight cover to cover read. Uh, I do have two recommendations uh, tonight. The first one is to have the Washington Central Unified Union School District receive the report uh, and uh, entitled CMSI Curriculum Review of Washington Central Unified Union School District. 
date May, date, May 2021. The key word in this is to receive it. Uh, not It's not asking the board to accept it. Uh, I still, as your superintendent, still need time to review it. And there may be things in there that I do not accept either. Uh, this is, uh, again, a review. Uh, it's, it's a document. Uh, but I can also, I can officially begin this process uh, by having the board receive it. And uh, once you receive it, uh, the second motion is to direct me to prepare a response to include the following information, prioritizing the areas needing attention, identify which conditions most adversely affect students, identify which findings most adversely affect the system and develop a plan to address the recommendations. Uh, I've heard several teachers in the audience tonight from the public comments, uh, and I just want to address them here. Uh, the first thing is, is you know, how do we go about developing a superintendent response? And my intention is to engage with teachers and staff. I intend to hold office hours this summer. I wanna meet with teachers and community members to get their input. But I also wanna remind the board uh, that the curriculum review is only one artifact uh, of many art different pieces that we're gonna to have to consider in any strategic planning process. So uh, there, you know, there should be community engagement in the strategic planning process. Uh, there should be, I hear folks want to have community forums. Uh, I, would, I would suggest having a community forum after the superintendent prepares the response uh, because uh, I will be doing my own process in, in developing uh, the, uh, the response to the full report. And at that point, that, again, that'll be one of several uh, uh, item, items for the school board to consider. The school board is going to ultimately have to own and uh, uh, adopt the strategic planning process when we're ready to go into that. And you know, I would like to think that this curriculum review document is utilized um, uh, obviously with community input and uh, getting engagement from our teachers and staff. I think the teachers and staff are going to play a major role in anything that arises out of this report and any other actions that come from a strategic planning process and they should be included. Uh, the, uh, the big thing is, again, um, to be for, for you to direct me to prepare the response, and uh, I will be working to uh, answer these questions and also engage uh, with our teachers and staff in this area. All right, thank you, Brian. Um, so we have a recommendation for uh, um, two recommendations. They're independent. Take them one at a time. Does, does anyone want to move? To support the first one, that the acceptance of the review. Um, uh, I'll move that we receive it, not that we accept it. Oh, sorry, sorry, receive. No, that's okay. Um, uh, I'll, to spell it out, uh, I'll move that the board receive the report entitled "CMSI Curriculum Review of Washington Central, etc." Dated May 2021. Thanks, Scott. Any second? Dorothy seconds. Okay. That's the motion. So Diane and then Lindy. Yeah. So my, my questions were more about clarifying a couple of things on motion too. So I can just, before it went into a motion, I want to clarify so I okay. can just. Wait. So if you can hang tight on that, Lindy. Mine's also about that, but just the pragmatist in me. I have it in my hands. Why am I voting to receive it? I received it. It's in my hands. So I, I guess that's just me being, I don't understand that part, but I'll comment on the second part in a minute. I don't know that there's a great answer to that other than that's uh, sort of a perfunctory. Let's let the attorney speak, Chris. Well, I was going to say, I, I don't know what that, that means. And I wonder, Brian, do you know, does the word receive have any particular function in, in the whole in, in considering the uh, the curriculum review, yeah. From, from what I understand, uh, you receive it to let the public know that you you're aware that you you received the report. Uh, the uh, the that's really what it comes down to. Uh, it's not about accepting it. You're not saying that you accept it, you agree with it, you approve it, or anything like that. It's just really acknowledging that to the uh, public that you've uh, we've done this. Re uh, you've uh, authorized this review. The review has taken place. You've now received the report and. Uh, and basically, that's it. <laughs> Sounds okay. like a formality. It does sound, yeah, okay. Other Thank comments you. on the motion or questions? 
Stephen? I, I would just make a comment and I, I won't, this is multiple years ago and I'm getting old, so forgive me if I don't get it quite right. Um, but when, when the report was done several years ago, oh, the, the report on economies, if that helps explain it to people, it was when Bill Kimball was the superintendent Efficiency. and it was economies and administration, economies and savings. It was a yes. whole range of things. Um, I, I believe this is the same language we used with that, that we received the report. And I, I, I think it is a te technicality, but it's a technicality that's been um, embraced previously. So I, 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 I think we just acknowledge that we've received it. Well, there's some, some precedent for this. Um, probably doesn't have a lot of value, but probably not a lot of downside either. Um, any other comments on this motion? Okay, so all those in favor of receiving <laughs> the report, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Abstain? Okay, so that's received. All right, most, the second recommendation is more substantive. Would anybody like to make a motion about directing the superintendent to respond? So I guess that's where I have a couple of questions, Kari, before a, a motion even happens. So okay. one is the response, who is the response to, and what is it, you know what I mean? And um, and then I wondered if there was a reason why it wouldn't include the curriculum person also, that it's a team of talking through it and, and providing the response. So those were the two questions, just more clarity around what is the response, you know, more detail about prepare a response, what, what kind of response or what, and is it a response that goes to the board for action or is it a response that's going out? And then we, so just clarity. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah I can answer it. I mean, typically it's a response that would go to the board uh, because ultimately uh, the next step is, uh, I think the board's gonna wanna decide uh, at some point what it is that we want to do with what we've learned from this report. Uh, so there's, again, it's 157 pages. There's a lot of there's a lot of pages in here, and so ultimately the response would be going to the board. And I, it's my understanding that the board is considering doing a strategic plan, a three to five year plan in the in the future. And this could be an opportunity to look at what are some things here that we would want to do. If you recall that the uh, this curriculum management review is really uh, we were measured against ourselves. So the idea here is, is uh, you know, to engage with you know, folks such as you know, the curriculum director, the teachers, uh, community members, and getting their input. And you know, I, I, as your superintendent, my goal is to look at those areas, right? Uh, look at those, look at these four letters here, but also uh, going out there and uh, talking to different folks about, you know, here, here it is. Have you read the report? Let's let's have up talking about having office hours, meeting with teachers and community members to get their input. I think those are the things that. Uh, we would be looking at, but again, the response would be to the board and it would just be one artifact of many uh, different artifacts that we have for the strategic planning process. Okay, thank you. Diana, that, that good, you're good with that? Um, um, <laughs> I guess I just think uh, context wise, to me, it would be helpful if it was a response that came from the superintendent in tandem with the curriculum, um, I see. you know, director. Thank you, Lindy. Um, um, mine's very similar. Uh, I instead of a direct the superintendent to prepare, I think it should be a committee that includes input from not just the curriculum director but some other educators across the spectrum, because I would not expect one person to have that breadth of knowledge across the grade levels and across the content areas. So to have input since this one, you know, when we did our review many years ago, it wasn't that many years ago, but it was literacy. This one is about everything. And I just think to have direct the superintendent to prepare the response doesn't include those voices. And I clearly heard from people that 
there should be more of a committee that's working on these and different voices as it's being read. So that was my concern. Okay, so a couple, couple comments in favor of a more inclusive response process. Scott, you're next. Thanks, Kari. Um, my understanding of this, when we direct the superintendent to do something, um, we do that because he is uh, accountable to us and answerable to us um, for what we ask. And then he does, he organizes it uh, in order to give us the, um, the product that we need. Um, and I, I would assume that that would include delegating a lot of um, a lot of aspects of this to the people who are best able to answer those questions. Um, I'll maybe let Brian answer that, but um, that would be my expectation anyway. Yeah, I, I would uh, second what you're saying, Scott. Uh, it's important to have it from the superintendent because I am accountable to you, the board. Uh, the leadership team is accountable to me. Uh, and, and so ultimately the uh, leadership team members uh, one of, we're having a retreat the next few days. We're going to be meeting again in, from August 2nd to August 6th. We're going to, I'm also trying to get everyone some time to go away this summer on vacation <laughs> to just get a break because we've been working around the clock in July. Uh, but uh, one of the big things we're doing uh, this upcoming, uh, the next, at some point in the next few days, uh, we're having a, a we're meeting with, as a leadership team. And uh, one of the things that we're going to be looking at is I'm going to be asking the input from the leadership team uh, what process would be helpful for me to support me in writing this uh, response. And so I do plan on making it collaborative uh, and being a, being a collaborative, but I think it's very important that it comes from me uh, as your only employee. Chris and then Jonas. So um, Brian is not our only employee. Um, all of the staff members are our employees. Uh, and I think that we um, can uh, direct the superintendent to draft the response, but we can also direct the superintendent to include certain um, segments of our community in helping draft the response. And to that end, I would uh, want us to direct that um, uh, teaching staff from across the disciplines be included, that the leadership team be included uh, in that a, com a committee of those participants be created and that the uh, committee um, create and um, attend at least two, if not three public forums um, before the response is finalized because we've heard a lot of community interest in this curriculum uh, review and soliciting input from our communities and what they expect and hope for their students and our students uh, would be very valuable uh, and uh, to have that at the front end of the process as opposed to the back end of the process when the results are already finalized. So um, I think the board has the, the uh, power to direct um, the basic parameters of how the response um, should be prepared and how it should, uh, what, what individuals should be involved in creating um, the response. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Jonas? Um, I, how, now that it's the summer, um, I wonder how, how are we going to engage the teachers <coughs> dur during the summer? In I can do it, it, response. Just, oh, it, sorry, Chris, just to clarify. Yeah. In, how is Brian going to engage the teachers in, in crafting a response, Br Brian? Well, I mean, one of the first things I was going to do is uh, open up office hours during the summer, uh, make myself available to meet with teachers uh, who want, who have who wish to discuss with me uh, uh, and, and talk to me and meet with me. I uh, plan on meeting with the leadership team uh, the next two days uh, and to get their input about uh, the process and then re-engaging the leadership team and, and the, when we come back because some people will be coming, going on different vacations during the month of July. Uh, however, uh, from, so in that first week in August, we would also start thinking about how we, else we can uh, look at that, look at this report. Because again, it's 158 pages. It's going to take some time to read. You know, I, I plan on reading it on the beach at some point this summer. <laughs> I, I have not had a chance to read everything from cover to cover with this report. 
Uh, so, which is why I, I'm happy that the board is only receiving the report and not accepting the report. Um, there's a lot to it here. Uh, I think that the, it, it's important that folks realize it comes from the superintendent, not from the leadership team, not from the teachers. Uh, I think the superintendent should have the, uh, uh, the wherewithal to uh, include folks and make it an inclusive process. Uh, and I think coming up with ideas about how to do that and making it more inclusive, uh, in addition to reaching out to the leadership team, uh, we can also uh, you know, send out blasts, email blasts and uh, uh, letters to the community to get them also to let them know about my office hours and to come by and, and, uh, and invite folks to talk to me about the report. So I have a question, Chris, Chris, can you hold for just a second? Sure, absolutely. Mine's a timing question. Uh, it's really how important is it that you get this direction from the, the board tonight? And in by way of context, I had the same thoughts as you, Brian. This is a lengthy and substantive report and I haven't had any time to dig into it. I don't, other than the presentation we got uh, three weeks ago, I don't, I don't really have much to go on yet. And We've heard some concerns. Um, I'd really like to, to dig into it for myself and sort of assess what we would direct you to do. And I'm looking at the recommended motion. There's four elements to it. Two of, two of them have question marks by them. So, uh, you know, I, I think it, to me, it, 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 I'd prefer to have some time to think about what we would like to direct you to do. So I guess that's my question to you. How important is it to have have this direction tonight. And uh, part of that question is, what's stopping you if you don't have a direction from us, what's stopping for you from working on this uh, in the interim? Well, I mean, I think the idea is that you're authorizing me to prepare, prepare a response as, as, your, uh, as your employee of uh, the district. Uh, and then I can find a, a way to uh, work with my, the folks that work directly for me uh, to look at, look at these areas. And, and I think it'll start rich, rich discussions. Uh, without motion, without directing me to do it, I would be doing it without authorization from the board, and I get my power uh, from and from you. Uh, so, the re the request is for the you for for the board to give me the uh, uh, the authorization to prepare the response, and letting everyone know that I've been authorized to prepare a response. I'll be looking at these areas. I would like to hear what your thoughts are, and uh, it would allow me to get to work on this sooner rather than later. Uh, because I do know that there, we do have a lot of work to do in our district. Uh, we, you know, strategic planning, we're looking at uh, preparing uh, student achievement. Uh, or we're looking at trying to improve our student achievement outcomes for our children. And uh, this would be a good authorization for me to begin the work. Sure, thanks. Chris, you're next. Um, so my focus on the committee process is that there's cross-pollination when committees meet together and discuss. Um, as opposed to having a single repository of, of the different sources of information. Um, I also think that there's no rush here. We're not going to have a um, program for adoption uh, by September. And it is, it's a 158-page report. Um, and, it, and it needs time. And, and there's a lot of community interest in this, in this process. Uh, there's a lot of staffing interest in this process. I imagine a lot of the staff is going to be reading this report and grappling with the same type of length that we all are. So I, I don't see, I have a sense of urgency about getting the response out um, and engaging our community, um, which is already pretty engaged as we heard tonight through a lot of comments in the process uh, as part of the process, I think can only benefit the final product and ensuring that the, the staff members and in terms of teachers, Jonas, you, you mentioned the teachers being engaged over the summer. Maybe that happens in the fall. Maybe the committee is constituted over the summer, but then does their work in the fall. Um, you know, just because rushing it uh, will not serve us, I, don't, I do not believe. Thank you. Okay, uh, Jill. Um, I'm wondering if it might make more sense to authorize the superintendent to prepare the process by which all of this work is going to get done so that we can actually really understand the public engagement piece of it and the teacher engagement, all the stakeholder piece. I think that's what we're all, I'm hearing a lot of that. I'd, certainly what I'm interested in is how do we do this as a community? 
understanding that it would be the superintendent, you know, ultimately presenting the report. But I would feel more comfortable if we must authorize something tonight, and I'm not sure we do need to do that, that we'd be authorizing the superintendent to develop the process by which this work would take place so that we could, uh, I think, then also really see it written down how, you know, some of the strategies that um, that might be used to create that engagement. Well, that's not a motion, right? You're just floating that. No, idea. I'm floating to see how if it resonates. Okay, Scott. I'm resonating. <laughs> I think it's a good idea, Jill, um, especially because uh, referring back to what we heard before, people need a break. Um, I uh, I was I was chair. Remember when we made this decision, and I um, I was happy to do it because we could take potentially a major step towards um, towards dealing with some of our fundamental goals, our foundational goals, um, and get it paid for through grants so that it wouldn't affect the budget at all. And I figured that you know a stress test um, would be even more revealing than the kind of um, you know, if everybody were uh, able to prepare for it and, you know, um, be ready for everything. Um, but I think, I think I miscalculated on that one by a long shot. And there's, there's so much um, tension and, and stress in the system at this point. I think a, a little bit of relaxation, a little bit of time, uh, laying out the process so that people have some expectation of where this is going. Um, I think your idea, Jill, sounds really good to me. Okay, Lindy, and then I'm really hoping to get to some resolution here. I just, I, I agree with Jill, and I also feel like we paid thousands of dollars for this, so I expect it's going to be read. I expect there will be a response to it, whether from us as well as the superintendent, it's our, if we approved these many thousands of dollars to have this done, I don't think I need to tell somebody they need to read it and respond to it. So I think that's a little bit of my um, concern. I just am expecting that there will be something and I'm hoping it's through a committee. And when it happens during the school year is fine with me. You know, I'll, I'll just say I, I like Joel's suggestion, um, especially if it can incorporate. How does it? How is this actually going to fit in with strategic planning? Because I feel like that's kind of murky, and and um, people want to know at this point what is the process. Stephen, uh, just give me a second to get another screen. So, uh, hopefully, to help you, Kari, I, I would like to make a motion, and the motion would be to direct the superintendent of schools to prepare a response to submit to the board in its October 2021 school board meeting, identifying the areas needing attention, utilizing direct input from public forum, leadership team and staff. I'll second that. Okay. Discussion? Could Stephen just read it one more time? Yeah. So a motion to direct the superintendent of schools to prepare a response. Let me see. A response to the report to be presented to the school board in its October 2021 meeting that identifies the areas needing attention and utilizes direct input from public forum, leadership team, and staff. More discussion, Jonathan? Yeah, my, I guess my only suggestion would be, instead of the word utilizes, includes, Replace with includes input from community members, or that demonstrates, or that something that that uh, 
essentially makes it a requirement that those groups have in fact uh, provided input to the superintendent and their input is included in the report, whatever subsequent report he writes. Okay. Thank you. Other comments, Chris? Um, I, I will oppose this motion because it's not specific enough in terms of um, how uh, the various community members and constituencies, including staff and administrators, administration will be included. I think we should have that. I think we should be concrete about that. Um, in the um, entry plan, um, I think in the very last page, there's um, various representations about including uh, the community members that uh, participate in the planning process um, and the staff and the administration uh, and to say, um, we're going to wait until the very end and the product is presented before we know the mechanisms of that inclusion, I think is, is backward. I think we should insist on um, a, a committee process and on, uh, you know, a public forum process uh, for um, community members to voice their opinions and share their views and what their hope for their kids uh, and have um, a mechanism with, with those are those constituencies are certainly included in the process before the result is is developed. Thank you. Okay. So Chris would like us to be much more specific in, in the parameters of the process. Other would. comments? Scott. Thanks, Kari. Uh, I, I understand what you're trying to get at, Chris, but I worry that we're just we're getting way too micro in our approach. I think we might be able to accomplish the, the same end if we just, you know, ask the superintendent to report on um, on what um, essentially what Joe was talking about earlier, what the what process he has been following, so that we can then um, consult and offer suggestions if we think that he's not he hasn't been open enough or or if he's missing a group, or if there's anything that um, that we think he should do that it appears that he's not doing. I think we can accomplish that just in the course of monitoring the um, between now and October. So you're suggesting an agenda item, say, in, yeah, in uh, August or precisely. something like that? Thank yep. you. Okay. Very good. Jonas? Yeah, it's going to be a habit for me tonight, but I, I agree with Scott. I don't think we need to get that granular. You know, if, if we ask for a layout of the process, we will have the opportunity to have input in, in, into that process when, when it's presented to us. Okay. okay, other comments? Um, okay, so we've got Stephen's motion um, and we've got some suggestions. Um, about how that could be improved. Um, Stephen's motion's on the table. Um, Lisa, can we hear it back, please? Sorry, it takes me a while to no find all the buttons. Okay, um, so he moved to direct the superintendent of schools to prepare a response to the curriculum review report to submit to the board at its October 2021 board meeting, okay. identifying the areas needing attention, utilizing direct input from public forum, leadership team and staff. And then there was some discussion about using, demonstrating or including versus utilizing. All right, any final comments before we vote? Just to be clear. I have one final comment, Kari. Sorry. No, go ahead, Jill. Well, I was just gonna say, I just wanted to note for others, something that I'm observing, which is that Stephen's motion only actually addresses the very first item, which is identifying the areas that need improvement. It's not all three things. So I actually think it would be, it might accomplish something substantially similar to, um, what I was suggesting that, you know, is to have a process. He's talking about having, um, you know, there's the public comment, I'm not, or the public input. I'm not sure we need to get that much more granular if we're just identifying the areas for improvement. It's the very first of those four items. So just wanted to note that. Yeah, thank you. Jonas. 
Yeah, just just to be clear, um, Stephen's motion is to have the superintendent prepare the response for us, not Jill's suggestion that we ask the superintendent to present us with a plan for and a, and a process for putting that together. Okay, then then I will not support this, and I will hope that we will do another motion after this. It's not a request for a process. It's a re request for a response, a response to a specific part of Brian's recommendation with some stipulations about how that process, what that process should include. That's how I read it. Okay, I think we're ready to vote. All those in, those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Or raise your hand. Aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. No. no. Nay. Nay. Okay, I think we need to do a roll call. I, I, I was too close for comfort. Um, so Jonas, you're a no. No. Chris? No. Vera? No. Steven? Yes. Um, okay, now I'm losing it. Scott? Yes. Jonathan? No. Lindy? No. Diane? Yes. Dorothy? Dorothy, you look frozen. Yes. Okay. Who have I missed? Jill? Yes. And did I miss anybody? Yourself. Yeah. Get to break the tie? Yep. Come on. Um, you have a coin? Oh, no. Is it, is it really a tie? Oh, no. It Sorry. is a tie. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to vote no. Okay. All right. Um, any further action on this one tonight? Any, any I, would, comments? I would ask Jill to remove her suggestion, which I think it had a fair amount of support in terms of advising the process. Let me try. I was trying to write something. I, it's hard on the fly. So I would move that we authorize the superintendent to develop a process by which he will seek input from stakeholders to do the four items that are listed in the memo. I, I didn't write them all down. Do you mean do the items or prepare a response of? I'm saying we're going to authorize him to develop the process by which Thank he you. will um, seek the public input to develop a response doing the four things. I'm basically saying let's move the whole thing to process development with public input. What we what he would the work we're asking him to do is the process, not the work. Is what I'm suggesting. Sorry, maybe the words don't quite work. I would take a friendly amendment. I would I, I would say we would direct the superintendent to um, to present the board with a plan and a process for um, collecting public in you know public input and input from stakeholders in the district um, that would lead to a report including the following information and those four points and I and that we would ask that that be delivered um, I think by that date in in October sounded sounded good to me Let's let it breathe. Okay. Um, I, would, I would second that. I don't think my motion was ever seconded. So I, I would second Jonas's motion. Okay. So we have a motion and second. Um, Lisa, do you need that stated again or do you have it? Sorry, I have um, moved to direct the superintendent present the board with a plan and a process for collecting public input and input from dis, uh, from stakeholders in the district that would that would lead to the preparation 
of a report, including the following information and then in those points A through D um, to be in, in that plan and that process would be delivered to the board, you know, at the, what is it, October 21st board meeting. Can I offer a friendly amendment? Of course. That we um, ask the superintendent to deliver the process at our next board meeting, because I don't think you can deliver the plan and the process at the same point. Fair. That's fair. I would strike plan from the motion. And and so that we would get the process at our next board meeting and go from there. Okay. Okay. May, uh, Jill, Lisa, would you... Lisa, do you have clarity now? Yeah, so so process is taken out of it and it's just directing no, plan him. Was taken no, no. Out of it. Plan is taken up, process is is left, and instead of October 21st, it's the next regularly scheduled board meeting. Oh, okay. And, and Jill, would you still second that? Yes, sorry. <laughs> okay, I, Lisa, can you please read it? Mm -hmm. Wait, am I muted? <laughs> no. no, you're good. Okay. <laughs> oh gosh, okay. So uh, let's see, Jonas moved to direct the superintendent to present the board with a process for collecting public input and input from stakeholders in the district that would lead to the preparation of a report, including, including the following four bullets to be delivered by the next regular board meeting. Okay. Can I just, uh, clear can I just ask, are we talking about the next regular one? When we start the uh, year in uh, August or September, I mean, that, that's where I'm trying to figure out. Um, as, as the one who made the motion, I don't think we're going to have a meeting in July. Um, so I would say the first, the, the, the meeting in August. Okay. Looking for the process, proposed process by, by the August meeting. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay, comments on Jonas's proposal, motion? Not all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Attention. That passes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Why don't we take a break? break please. I was yeah, just going to ask. We have five minutes. I really hope we could get through 4.2, but it's not going to happen. So let's take a 10 minute break. We'll be back at 7.55. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, I would really like us to get going again here. Um, I don't know how many people are back. I don't think that many. Um, I'm going to start talk just to do a time check here. I'm, I'm sorry that I left us so far behind in our schedule. Um, Next up, we've got the school time proposal, which is uh, substantive and timely. Uh, then we're going to go into financial um, reports and information. Um, I'm not sure how much, I think this is all informational, if I understand correctly. So perhaps we can save some time there. Chris, are, are you back? How are you feeling about the policy based on the comments we've heard tonight? Oh, he's not um, you know, I, the policy committee, I do, I do see that there are more policies here than we intended to um, have come up because we were going to uh, not forward the technology policies to the board just so we could solicit input from folks who were, were interested. And so um, I would move that we uh, just table those because um, they all deal, they all deal with the, um, the policy committee. Uh, with the technology aspects of the policy committee. So I move that we table that. All, all of them. In all of them. The second and third reading. Okay, great. Yep. Well, that'll save some time there. Thank you. And then we'll have the uh, interviews. Are we actually interviewing potential new board members tonight? Are we talking about interviewing them? 
I believe we are actually interviewing I them. I think we're actually interviewing them. I, there's an email from Floor. I'll take a closer look at it before we get to that part of the agenda. Okay. And the letters of introduction from the from them are in the packet. Yeah, all that. Okay. And I believe it's we... an interview without a decision process, though, is how I understood it. So. Okay. Yeah. If you wouldn't mind taking a closer look, that would be great. I will. And then, and then the rest should move through pretty quickly, but then we'll have to go into executive session. So. All right. Are we ready to take up 4.2.5 school time proposal? Brian? Uh, yes. Uh, so this is a, uh, 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 an idea that uh, uh, we've been talking about with U32 administration. Uh, and I'll turn it right over to Stephen uh, to let him uh, talk more about it. Hey, good evening, everybody. So thank you um, for hanging on for this. Um, we've been looking for several years as uh, being able to extend our school day. And one of the biggest uh, issues that we've encountered during this time is uh, certainly busing issues. Um, and so uh, towards the second half of this year, we started working on could we do this um, by, it, could we extend the student school day by 20 minutes um, with the busing uh, possible? And so what you see in the proposal is that it is possible if we add four buses or up to four buses, um, we could extend this, the school day at uh, U32 for students by 20 minutes. And, uh, and so the motion that I think that we would be asking you in all of this would be um, to approve up to $241,000 from the fund balance for um, the busing um, that would be necessary to extend that school day. Now, there are a lot of other considerations that went into this, not just the busing. So we did look at other things like how did this affect athletics? How does this affect um, students uh, getting home in time for if they had younger siblings? Um, we addressed uh, a lot of other issues. You heard the concern around childcare that some of our teachers may face. Um, and so we certainly will take that into consideration as we um, as we look at this extending the school day time for students, but it does not require us to make any changes to the collective bargaining agreement um, for either the teachers or the ESPs. And so you see the proposal that we had there. Um, what it really does is it extends us from 235 to 255, adding 20 minutes, which for our middle school means that they can have a silent sustained reading time that will not interfere with their core time. And it adds five minutes to every class at the high school. Now, I know I threw in some calculations to show you what the totals add up to over time, but we won't, we won't say that it just means that kids are going 40 more days over six years. Um, but it is a significant amount of time um, when you start to add it all up. And so um, we really hope that uh, the board will approve this. Um, and, uh, and if there's certainly any questions, I'll be happy to, to take those. Thank you, Stephen. So let's go with questions then. And I, I can't see people's faces at this point. My bandwidth is so poor. So just please raise your hand electronically. Jonas. Uh, Stephen, can you address the concerns about child care that were brought on? And to be clear, are you looking for a, do you need a motion to extend the school day or do you just need a motion for the funding for additional transportation? And you know how would we address? I mean, I hear the concern, right? This is that this is sort of coming at the very end of the school year. There's not a whole lot of time to play uh, to plan. Would there be a way to to delay this? Uh, you know, because um, it sounds like a great idea, but is there a way to delay this until childcare facilities are you know back running full time? Um. So several questions there. So the first one, let me just get the first easy one. Um, I do not think that the board has to approve a longer student day um, because it is still within the contractual um, ability of the teachers. Um, and we can set a new, uh, we have the ability within the contract to change start and end times, although we're not changing those for teachers. Um, and so we don't think that there's any issue there. The, the need for funds in order to get busing would be what we need the board to approve. Um, as for child care, um, there has been a limited number of teachers who've expressed this to me. Um, one of the things that we're exploring is can community connections support us because of where these students might be located. Um, so we do, are looking at that. I can't say that I can wait until child care 
fully reopens because I don't know when that will be. I would hope that with the governor rescinding all of the emergency orders, they could. The issue that many child care facilities have is that they don't have adequate staffing to run later in the day. And that is not something that I, I, can, I can't affect. And so I think we just have to make a decision and then work with a, those few teachers that we have, um, possibly having to work with their schedules um, to make sure that if there is a major issue that we can address that in the short term so that they can get to the child care. Uh, and that would be my first choice for us. Okay, thanks, Lindy. What is the current teacher work day time? Is it the same, the 745 to 315? Yes, and it would not change. Okay, that's what I read in your memo. So I was, uh, I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. Okay, and Diane? Uh, do we know if buses are readily available or are they any of the shortages that we might encounter? So the only reason I'm bringing this to you is because we've had those conversations with the bus company to make that all um, that they could, said that they can make this work. Um, and uh, and so I would not even be bringing this to you if we couldn't do it with the bus company because they're really the limiting factor in all of this. So they've assured us that, that they can make this work. Um, there may be some other ways that busing could um, be used. Um, so there is a possibility that we could eventually have high school, middle school, and some elementary school kids on buses together. Um, but that's something that we have to discuss a little bit more with families um, before we make that firm decision on that. And then the other thing that I would say about uh, busing is that we underutilize some of our buses at U32, and this is a real attempt to make sure that we don't. We have as few as eight kids on some of our buses, which is um, if we can change some of our bus routes, we might be able to uh, better utilize the buses that we have and we may not even need four more. Okay, thanks, Chris. Okay, um, hi, Stephen, thanks for showing, for um, pre presenting this proposal. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, one is teaching day won't change, but what within the teaching day does change in order to get those extra 20 minutes? That's my first question. And the second is, um, <laughs> We need to address the potential of for elementary students and U32 students sharing the same bus. Um, is that is that a certainty or a likelihood? Um, so starting with the second one, it's a likelihood, but not a certainty. Um, and it certainly depends on which routes as we uh, look at what routes do students will students be taking. We're going to ask for people to opt in to busing. That's a really important thing. We've got some buses that, um, because we do, we do an open uh, kind of enrollment, we'll say that we have 75 kids on a bus in some cases, and there really aren't. There's only like 20, uh, because we we haven't asked families to opt into the busing to use it regularly, and so we just assume that people are going to use it. Um, and so that's something that we're going to to do this summer is to ask people to to say that they're going to ride the bus and then do some better bus counts. So that's not a certainty that we will do it, but certainly um, it's a likelihood. Okay. Um, the other question you asked about what would change within the teacher day. So for most teachers, it would mean that they have an additional 20 minutes of instructional time, um, but all of the time that teachers are going to be asked um, will fall within <laughs> contract. So they will still have the, uh, the uh, contractual amount of uh, planning time, uh, their you know, duty-free lunch there, all of that. So it all fits within the contractual time. And in fact, we're not quite pushing up, we're not even pushing really close to um, the maximum amount of instructional time that we would could require under the contract. So, but something must be changing though, because you're reallocating, or 20 minutes are being used for instructional time that weren't before, and I'm just, just so we know what's coming down the pike potentially. Okay, so I, so our while our student day ended at two thirty five in the yeah. past, um, from two thirty five to three fifteen was still teacher time, um, and so that time was um, was really given over to planning. We asked teachers to do office hours um, at least once a week um, before or after school, so that they were there for an hour. 
those office hours are not attended very well at all. There are some okay. students who take advantage of it, but we also added um, last year, the previous pandemic year, um, we added 15 minutes to callback so that callbacks were longer so that students could access teachers. They could spend that time. And that's where students really get their time in um, uh, with teachers when they need them, not before or after school. And so essentially before teachers had the time from 235 to 315 that could have been counted as planning time or something like that. But um, it still it, it gave them more planning time than uh, contractually necessary. Okay, thank you. That's helpful. Mm -hmm. All right, you're next. Thanks, Kari. I, just so as not to lose sight of the business at hand, I would like to make a motion that the board approve earmarking $241,000 from the fund balance for fiscal year 21-22. I'll second that. Okay, thank you. We have a straightforward motion and a second. Comments? Kari, can I ask a question? Please. Does this have complete support of the leadership team? Maybe not necessarily for the elementary school students, but at U32, the administration from U32? Yes, it does. Okay. Thank you. Can I have a question? Sure. Do we have any, any sense of how uh, families will react to this information or what they think? So to be fair, no, I'm not 100% sure. But one of the things that we wanted to make sure when we made this change that we didn't swap the elementary kids arriving home prior to the middle and high school kids arriving home. Um, so that if that was a concern, um, at, at worst, they should end up at home at the same time. But in all likelihood, it looks like the high school and middle school kids will arrive home before elementary students. Because we knew that that would be a major concern if it were a child care issue for like the any of our latchkey kids or things like that. I heard that concern before. Okay, thank you. All right, I know you can't see Brian. I think he is. Go ahead, Brian. Yeah, I was just making sure we got the motion. I what I heard what the motion I heard was to approve up to two hundred forty-one thousand from the fund balance for fiscal year twenty-two or twenty-one twenty-two for additional buses needed to extend the school day. Uh, from 8 o'clock a.m. Uh, to 2.35 p.m. to 8 o'clock a.m. to 2.55 p.m. That's what I meant to say. Didn't for U32. For, for U32. Thank, thank you, Jonas. Yes. Sir. Great. More discussion? Okay. All those in favor of the motion? Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstention? Okay, the aye has had it. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you, board. All right. So we're going to move on to 4.3 Finance Committee. We've got a mix of discussion and action. We've got a financial report and ESSER report. Who is going to? Lead us on that, Brian. Uh, well, I will uh, turn this over to Lori. Lori, it's your show. <laughs> Since she left, I decided to do a quick recap so that I could be brief. Um, on page 174, the financial report begins. Um, it includes a two page narrative and some of the highlights we discussed at the finance committee um, were with regard to the answer grants. Um, as a quick recap, um, due to the pandemic this past year, we received over $5 million in grants. Um, some were allocated back to fiscal year 2020 and some most were for this fiscal year. Um, we reviewed these grants in great detail throughout the year because we had spent them by December 31st. So the two in the report um, that we focused on at the finance committee were ESSER 1 and ESSER 2. Um, those grants spanned from January 1st to June 30, and we will completely spend them this year. So the ESSER 1 grant was 243,000, 
and the ESSER II grant increased from 923,000 to 1.1 million because the Agency of Education had an allocation change. So having said that, um, the good news is that the ESSER II grant allowed us to charge off staffing that we had previously included in our budget. And by doing so, the fund balance has increased. Um, as you recall, the Washington Central voters authorized the school board at town meeting um, to control and direct the use of the fund balance for operations. So by charging off these budgeted items to the grant, it allowed us to um, free up fund balance and put the money now as a at the local control of the school board instead of any other rigid um, requirements from the federal government. So that's great news. Um, the other great news is ESSER three grant. Um, we received the allocation and it's close to $2.5 million. And the ESSER three grant is going to be, it's in the process of being developed on what we can use it for. Um, we've completed the initial work um, by submitting the recovery and moving forward grant. And that was a team led by Jen Miller Arsenal, um, as well as there were other board members and staff on the, that committee. Um, we submitted the initial application and we received approval that our application is, is set to begin, um, but we're still awaiting guidance on what are the allowable uses for this money from the federal government through the state. So having said that, and since I knew that um, this would be the last time I could review this with you, I wanted to let you know that I sent the preliminary list to the Agency of Education and received authorization that the items on our list that we've been compiling for several months now are all eligible and they're considered allowable. Um, but what we haven't done is really put together a finite budget for those items. Um, you'll be in we're still in the initial stages of the ESSER III. Um, there's a lot more planning involved. Um, the board had previously approved additional nurses and a COVID coordinator from fund balance in the hopes that we could charge that to ESSER III, and we can. Um, the board ha has also continued to re review and approve any staffing needs when they're identified. And so as soon as we can get a little bit more instruction from the Agency of Ed, um, we can bring those other ideas forward as the staffing needs are considered. So an example is guidance counselors. Um, one of the things that the moving forward plan did was it recommended that we have full-time guidance counselors for one year um, and that we add a full-time middle school guidance counselor for U32 to support students. Um, so we did post those positions, but they aren't approved yet um, by the board until we find candidates and until a uh, staffing recommendation is brought forward. So that's the latest um, idea and concern that has arisen about ESSER. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about how the year's closing down. Um, so in April, um, you had an update and since April, the fund balance projections have increased by $280,000. We're still closing. Next Wednesday is the last day of the year, but the numbers seem very close. And so having said that, um, if you turn to page 175, the highlights are that we would have a $3.3 million fund balance. And there are some items that the board has already reserved and we just are reserving now a little bit more for busing. Uh, but before tonight's um, transaction, um, there was still $2.8 million available in the fund balance of which 2.2 is over the target amount. So the finance committee determined a couple things. One is that um, the capital fund needs money. And um, one of the recommendations for board action tonight was to move another million dollars to the capital fund from this reserve. Uh, another is that um, at the last meeting, the board authorized an additional 0.86 paraeducator at Doty, but we hadn't approved reserving the fund balance. So those two actions were something that um, would be brought before you tonight. I guess that's it for that part. Um, and then um, the other highlights where we reviewed in detail the food service programs. Um, I put in quite a few pages of how the local programs have been trending over time. 
We also um, learned that this year with the universal meals, um, we were surprised at how few students in, participated. Um, we had a low of seven breakfast, seven percent of the population eating breakfast at U32, to a high of 36 percent eating breakfast at Rumney. And I think we were surprised at why people wouldn't accept or take place with the free food that's being offered, and the federal government was paying for that. Um, for lunch, we had a low of 24 percent of the students at U32 participating to a high of 72% eating at Berlin. So one of the things we talked about was a lot of different ideas and possibly putting together a nutrition committee made up of a lot of stakeholders to review you know, what is going on and perhaps that group could develop a survey and, and collect feedback from students and families um, because we really are, we're just not knowing why students aren't choosing to eat with our school meals being free. So it was a shock to me. It's been monitored throughout the year. Um, I think it was a shock to a lot of people when I provided that information. Um, but on a good note, 72% of the Berlin students ate lunch. <laughs> um, so other than that, our committee reviewed um, some comparative information for education spending for equalized pupils. And that is on page 188 in this packet. Um, we are the highest cost per equalized pupil in the area in our neighboring districts at Washington Central. Um, and then I also identified um, where we rank compared to others. Um, let me just find that one page. Um, there are 114 districts in the statewide cohort sample that I received from the Agency of Education. And in the state, um, with one being the highest, um, Washington Central ranked 11 out of the 114 districts for cost per equalized pupil. And that was using the FY21 information. So something to consider might be, you know, why is that? Um, obviously there needs to be further analysis and we didn't have time to collect information from other school districts um, in that region to determine why. Uh, so we're looking into that and it's just another idea to consider as you develop the next budget. And then last but not least, I was asked to put together more comparative information for special education. Um, a note is that we basically have nothing on the Agency of Education website since 2018. So it was, so we, it was basically <laughs> unheard of. We could not um, compare ourselves to other schools. Uh, but what we could do is just kind of do more of a trending. And so some of the highlights in the trending um, was that for direct services and direct staffing, we have uh, one staff member for every 2.6 students. Um, and there is a weighted caseload factor that Washington Central uses, which shows um, one, st one staff member of a professional nature um, for 26 students. Um, if you don't consider the weighting, it's 10 students per each special educator. Um, there is an 11% decline in the IEP students. And because of that, and due to the um, increases, it, it amounted to a 28% increase in special ed spending per um, IEP student over a two year period. So the thing we talked about at finance was that Coming up in the near future, Act 173 will be kicking in, which means that any time we make a change in special education, it is um, paid for 100% uh, by the district instead of currently reimbursed at 56%. And so I just wanted to make you aware of that. That's on page 191, that as you develop future budgets, um, it needs to um, probably we need a program review to determine if the services, staffing, and spending are in line with the student needs and the declining number of IEP students, um, because as Act 173 kicks in, you get reimbursed based on student counts and not on spending. I covered that very fast, Kari, and I'm available for questions. And thank you for your time. Actually, if we could deal with the, thank you, Laurie. If we could deal with the two recommendations first on the bottom of page one. 78, there's two very specific um, requests. Um, the 
Someone care to make a motion regarding the support for Sarah? I'll authorize, I move to authorize reserving fund balance for the Doty 0.86 FTE paraeducator position for a cost of $31,368, less projected reimbursements of $17,566 for a net amount of $13,802. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. All in favor say aye, please. Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. So that passes. Jonas, do you care to make another motion? I sure would. I move to authorize a transfer to the capital fund in the amount of $1 million. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Okay, so that passes. Any questions for Lori? Not a question, but can we have a round of applause for Lori? All right. Thank you so much, Lori. The last Yay. final report. Yay! <laughs> That's what we did at finance. <laughs> oh, and I wanted to welcome Suzanne. She's here tonight. I don't know if you want her to say hello for us just a yeah. sec. Please yeah, do. that'd be great. And hopefully she has good internet up there and hardware. I hope so. <laughs> oh, there she is. Yay, Suzanne. Hi. Hey. Right. Welcome. Um, yeah. Thank you. Laura, you're fantastic. That was, uh, again, so impressive. So thank you. I'm glad to be here. Welcome, Suzanne. Welcome and um, Lori, congratulations and thank you so much for all your years. Um, okay, why don't we move on? Um, we sorry, have sorry, sorry, did you say sorry. Steven? I have my no, hand up. Is Steve, right, look, so I have ahead. my hand up. Um, go ahead. I, I would just like to make a request of the, I don't know what the group is called, the Agenda Planning Committee. Um, bo both of those presentations tonight on um, uh, equalized per pupil spending and special ed spending, I, I think are great reports and warrant more discussion from the board. So, and I'm not suggesting any particular time, but I, I think there, there's a lot of really um, important information that we would be uh, good use of our time to go over and digest and understand, not tonight, of course, but um, so if, if they could be, if there could be fought, time funded future agendas to fit them in, I think it would be very beneficial. Okay. Thank you, Stephen. All right. So we had decided to um, not take up the policy committee. We'll set that aside for another day. So we'll move on to 5.1 and interviewing our potential new board members. Um, Jill, did you have a chance to look at the email and get the framing on this? I did. It looks to me as though what Floor had outlined is that each person would have three and a half minutes to answer some questions that Floor had shared with all of them ahead of time. And then our process will be to consider the applications in, our, in an executive session, uh, not tonight, uh, at the next meeting and or in, I think actually at the beginning of August so that we can seat new board members by our August meeting is the idea. So we're listening tonight and then we're we're gonna actually discuss and vote at a later time. Okay. That's how I understand it. Great. And so I let the applicants, if they, if they think I got that wrong, please tell me, but that's how I understood the email, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so three and a half minutes per candidate? Yeah. Total, okay. All right, so why don't we just go in order then? Um, the first one I'm seeing is Ain Ainsley Burroughs. Are you here? I am. Hi, that's me. Um, I want to apologize in advance because my internet has been wonky this evening and I hope you can all hear me all right. Okay, good. Um, well, I will keep this brief as I believe that's a quality I would bring to this board as being quite timely. Um, but I have recently moved um, 
Uh, my partner and I bought a home in Middlesex, actually his childhood home last year. And we are slowly growing a family farm, which has been quite an adventure. But we are all very excited that our son Knox will be embarking on his educational career this fall as a kindergartner at Rumney. Um, I would love to be more involved in the school system and feel that becoming a school board member would be a great way to advocate for our schools and our students. I was raised in a long line of educators and as a teacher myself for the past seven years at Barrytown Elementary School, I feel very passionate about giving every student the best education possible. I have seen and experienced many changes in public education over my time as an educator and would really like to be a part of a system that promotes positive changes. Through my experiences working with children and families as an educator, I have researched, collaborated, collaborated um, advocated and negotiated for student needs. I believe that at access to a good public education is the best gift that we can give our youth and would love to be able to continue this work by joining this school board. I am skilled at communication and understand the value in asking questions and listening to the perspective of others. I'm organized, an innovative and creative thinker, and a quick learner. Additionally, um, as an educator, I am well-versed in elementary curriculums and have had experience as a teacher on the negotiation committee. I am a fresh face in this arena, both in terms of serving on a board and in terms of being fairly new to the Middlesex community. However, I feel that this is really a strength in that I would bring a new energy and the perspective of younger families to this board. I will be having a baby in November, um, which will bog down my schedule some. However, when I commit to something, I really tend to go all in and would devote as much time to being on the board as possible and as required of me. Um, as I previously mentioned, my son is just embarking on his educational journey, which would hopefully leave me on this board for many years to come if elected. And um, in terms of answering the last question, um, I would certainly be happy to attend any workshops or trainings to better serve as a school board member. And that's all I have for you guys. Thank you for your time. Very, very nice to meet you. And thank you for applying. Okay, so next, um, Chris Cataret, are you here, please? I am. Hi. Thank you, everybody, for allowing us to uh, come and chat with you folks. Uh, so my name is Chris Cataret. I'm a resident of Calus. Um, I've lived in Calus for most of my life, aside from a few years when I moved to Lindenville to work at Linden Institute as a, a dorm parent. Um, I'm interested in being on the school board because I really believe that the school board is the most important conduit to affect change on the entire community. Um, I'm, I'm very big into the community aspect of working and being involved in the school district. So currently I'm a football coach at U32. Um, up until the end of this school year, for the last two years, I was the athletic director for Callis, Berlin, uh, Doty, and Rumney. And <clears throat> I'm, I've been involved in Callis for as long as I can remember. I went to Callis Elementary School. I, I went to U32 and graduated from U32. Um, I was a member of the PTNO at Callis for many years. And then um, a board position opened up for the CES board uh, before the merger, and I was selected to fill that uh, position. I was then elected to fill the Callis board position prior to the merger, uh, was not able to serve in that position because the merger occurred. And then I ran against Dot actually um, in the, the first election and, and she, she uh, prevailed in that. So um, I wish her the best in retirement and from the from the board and 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 hope that I will be able to adequately fill her seat if selected. Um, I believe that everybody needs to have a voice. I believe that every student, teacher, parent um, 
all their voices are important and everybody needs to be heard. And I think that I can help bring that to the school board. Um, I'm not afraid to speak up and speak my mind. I'm not afraid to disagree with folks and I'm not afraid to learn new things and to have my mind changed as well. Um, I currently serve in my full-time capacity as the assistant superintendent of the Northeast Correctional Complex. Um, essentially why I bring that up is to say that I, I am part of an administration now. I understand management and leadership. I understand what it takes to, to have a successful organization and to have a successful program. I also understand what it means to serve uh, others. Um, I look forward to having an opportunity to speak with you more if, if selected. And I look forward to uh, joining the board if I'm given the opportunity to do so. Um, as it relates to training, Flora asked if we could speak a little bit about that. Um, when I was elected to fill the seat in Calus, I did take the online trainings that are required of the board members. I'm certainly willing to do that and whatever else it takes to become um, up to date on the new policies and up to date on the new guidelines. Um, and I think that that's what I have for you folks tonight, unless there's anybody else that has a question. I don't know if that's appropriate or not, but I'm certainly open to, to fielding any questions that have come up or our people are thinking about. Thank you, Chris. Much appreciated. Um, I think we won't do questions tonight. Um, and we'll move on to Maggie Weiss, please. Hi, took a moment there. Um, so in response to Flora's questions and, and also just, I appreciate hearing Chris speak. I think we're the only town with any um, competition for our positions and um, I have a great deal of respect for Chris. I just wanna say that first off. Um, so motivating me to, to pursue school board membership um, I've had a lifelong commitment to volunteerism. I'm wrapping up um, my commitment to the Everyone Eats distribution in East Calais. I'm a one board or one volunteer commitment individual. Um, it's the only way I can really afford to volunteer and fulfill my um, professional and personal commitments. I'm invested in the vitality of our school system. I'd like to volunteer to support the needs of our youth across the age spectrum in the school system um, with the sensitivity to the fact that kids in our special ed programs are often continuing beyond that typical 18 to 19 year old age range. Um, I feel that our public school system is an integral piece in maintaining a vibrant local community in our individual towns and collectively at our middle school and high school level. Um, you know, U32 has a very positive reputation um, on the regional level. And I think that's important on so many levels. Um, and I'm proud to be a resident in the school district. I'd also like to contribute in efforts to foster an educational and work environment that's transparent, equitable, inclusive, and diverse. I think we have a lot of work to do on that front. Um, the skills and experiences that qualify me to pursue school board membership, I have prior board mem membership uh, with Good Beginnings of Central Vermont and the Vermont Speech and Hearing Association. I'm a licensed speech language pathologist with a level one education licensure with educational SLP endorsement, although I work primarily um, in home health as a medical speech language pathologist. I was employed by the district um, when I was in graduate school. So, so I have the experience of working at the elementary level um, for a year. I participated on numerous hiring committees at the elementary level. I was also involved in a curriculum review about a decade ago under Jen Arsenault's direction. I come with both learned experience and academic study in varying educational pedagogical models. So I'm particularly interested in personalized learning plans and um, contemporary educational models. Um, personally, I routinely engage with other community 
community members, both folks who have kids in schools and people that don't. As a home health provider, I am serving the population of people whose children often have long been out of school and their concerns are largely around the cost of education and cost controls. So I have a sensitivity to that. Um, one of these questions is how long have you lived in the school district, which as a flatlander strikes me as a particularly kind of biased position. Um, I've been here 16 years. We moved to Palace as renters in 2005, and our then first grader promptly asked us if we could stay to, so that he could attend Callis Elementary. Um, we worked really hard to buy into this district, which is an expensive school district, um, to purchase in, and we did achieve that, and we have two sons who've attended Callis and then went on to U32, um, one who's still at U32. The next question was how much time will you, can you offer to board service? And I would say on average, I can commit about 10 hours of my time um, um, on a monthly basis with the combination of the committee and board requirements. And I'd be more than help, happy to attend any workshops or trainings in order to be effective um, board member. I, I did note that a fair number of the board members currently are educators. And I think that that perspective is really an important one um, for representing both the, the needs of the students and the um, professionals serving our kids. Great, well, thank you, Maggie, that, that was great. Um, so next up we have, um, forgive me if I mispronounce this, but Macklin? Hi, it's yeah. McKaylin. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's okay. You're not the only one. Um, thank you. I'm Michaela LeClaire. Um, before I launch into my, my little spiel, I just want to say that my um, letter of interest that was published with tonight's document has a typo in it. I left the S out of the initials of the board of the district. Um, I had noticed this and had immediately sent for another version, but I see the wrong one was included. So. Don't take that to think I am not detailed oriented. I am. <laughs> um, anyway, so as I said, I'm McKaylin LeClaire. I'm a resident of Worcester. Um, I have lived in this district for, I think about 20 years, um, cumulatively. I moved here from, I moved to Worcester from Woodbury when I was nine. And although I've lived elsewhere at times during my adult years. Um, I've lived back in Worcester for over five years now. Um, why do I want to join the school board? Something I've honestly asked myself many times um, and debated with my husband many times. But um, as the daughter of a teacher and as a former teacher myself, I'm extremely passionate about education. Um, additionally, I'm now a family doctor um, in Hardwick, and I see on a near daily basis how critical schools are to the mental health and well being of our children and our adolescents. Um, I'm particularly invested, of course, in this district, given that I'm a graduate of both Doty and U32, um, and I now have two children at Doty, a kindergartner and fifth grader. Because of this, I care deeply about the well being and excellence of the school district and its students, staff, and teachers. I personally feel that I received an outstanding, holistic, unique education at both Doty and U32, and I want to ensure that my children can have just as rich an experience as I did. Um, I believe that my experience as a student and now parent in the district, as well as my professional experience as a former teacher and, and in medicine, I think I could bring an important perspective to this role as, as a school board member. Um, and if granted a seat on the board, I'm certainly willing to attend any workshops or training um, to learn how to become an effective board member and to improve the overall functioning of the school board. Um, I've never served on a school board before, so I certainly would welcome any coaching <laughs> that um, was available. And I question the time, that's, that's so hard. As a, as a mother with two young children and a busy career, you know, I don't have abundant free time, but um, 
you know, I, I think as any working parent knows, we make time for what's important in life. And I feel this work is extremely important. So I would find whatever time is necessary to do it justice. So thank you for considering me a potential board member. Thank you, McAllen. Uh, that was great. Um, so why don't we move to Ursula Stanley, please? Hi, um, I wanted to take a moment to say thank you to all of the board members. I'm really grateful to be here tonight and to have the opportunity to speak to you. I am Ursula Stanley. I currently live in Middlesex, but I've been in the school district for about 10 years, both in Berlin and in Middlesex. I have had children in the district for about nine years. We have a rising ninth grader who has attended Berlin, Romney, and U32, and we also have a rising third grader at Romney. I'm interested in serving on the board because I believe in the importance of a quality education for all of our district students. And I believe I have qualities and perspectives that will contribute to the board's work. I have a bachelor's degree in engineering from Clarkson University and 12 years of past work experience as an engineer, which leads me to look at situations and problem solving very analytically. I have the ability to look at situations, determine what data already exists, what data we need, and then to be able to analyze the data and make informed decisions. I've also had opportunities to participate in community meetings to communicate and engage with affected communities. I've served my communities by volunteering with the PTO and PTNA groups. I've also led the local Girl Scout troop for the last five years. Recently, I've been working to improve my communication skills through mindfulness and interpersonal skills, stress tolerance and reflective listening. Um, I also have a perspective that I bring as a parent of a child who's in the special ed community. And I feel that I can give some of those families a voice. I don't have a set number of hours that I identified to give this role, um, but I've gone through and reviewed like the average general meeting times and the policy meeting times that have been happening and when they kind of increase and where they're more regular. and. I find myself lucky to be a stay-at-home mom and my kids are slightly older, so I have the capacity in my schedule now to take on the work needed to contribute to the board. And I would be very happy to take on any training and workshops available to help me better serve. I am a very eager learner. Thank you. Thank you, Ursula. Very nice to meet you. Thank you for applying. Uh, and finally, we have Patrick. Hello, can you hear me? That's great. Um, I'm Patrick Welly, I'm a resident of Middlesex, and I'm um, happy to be here today as a candidate for a seat in the school board. Uh, Flora asked what motivates me, and the first thing that motivates me certainly is my, my two young boys, um, preschooler and uh, kindergartner at, at Romney. Um, but also, I want to be part of the board to, to encourage uh, the board to um, direct the school to be an equitable place and an inclusive place, and one that, that uh, takes community input uh, seriously. I think that community input can be in, in um, scheduled right ways of, of in kind of, um, or, or, but also in capital ways. And so I think that there's being on the board that can help with that aspect. Um, particular skills, I'm a geologist, I'm a research scientist, so I'm going to read the reports with that kind of um, technical um, eye. I'm going to ask questions about the methods, and I'm going to ask questions about, about, about the data. Um, but also, I, my, my parents worked in public schools, and all of my formal education occurred in public schools, so I'm, I'm passionate about public schools. My father was the, the school psychologist for the district that I grew up in. My mother was the uh, school nurse for the neighboring uh, school districts when I was a kid as part of her career. Um, I've, lived in the, I've lived in Middlesex for about three years, um, but in that time, I've been, I've been um, endeavoring to get more involved in the community and particularly in uh, serving the school district um, I, uh, in, in, in many ways that I can. Um, how much time can I give? I'm a, I'm a busy person, um, but I do work out of my home, so uh, I don't have much of a commute, that's a good thing. But I'm, I'm, I'm committed to uh, putting in as much time as necessary to be an effective member of, of the board, um, whatever, that, whatever that might be. Um, and I'm certainly willing to, to go to trainings and workshops. I, I do that regularly with my, my, uh, actual, my, my actual job, and I find that the, those kinds of things are, are really fulfilling. Um, part, 
part of the work that I do is uh, I run uh, field campaigns for, for groups of scientists, and we, we develop trainings for, for people coming out into the doing geology field work for the first time. So I, I, I know the value of that kind of thing. And so I'm happy to bring that expertise to the world as well. So thank you for the, the consideration, and um, also thank you to the other members of, of my uh, of Middlesex that are here tonight as, as candidates. I think we're an impressive group. Um, so thank you to the board for the opportunity. Thank you, Patrick, and, and thank you to all our candidates. It's what an amazing group. We were so fortunate, uh, uh, and I hope that um, you all will get a chance to serve someday. Um, I, so I guess the, our process is we're going to not be able to make a decision until our August meeting. So I apologize that there's a delay here in taking action, but we'll just need some more time, and we need floor our chair uh, to join back up. So um, I think that's it for now. Is Jill or anybody else, is there anything else that we need to do tonight? No, I, I think that's it as far as I can tell. Okay. Well, thanks again. Uh, and uh, we'll certainly be in touch uh, in, in a little while. Okay, so moving on with our agenda, we have uh, already dispensed with 5.2. So now we're gonna move into 5.3 policy committee members. And Chris, would that be you introducing? Chris, you still with us? If Chris isn't there, oh, here he comes. I think I just let him in. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Kyrie? Are you there? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I fell off the uh, system. Um, <laughs> I don't think that is me, although we're the oh, um, okay. uh, last policy committee meeting, we had uh, three surprise guests, including Scott uh, and Floor, uh, and I don't remember who else, but they, they're, we're, we're looking for members on the policy committee because uh, Dorothy will resign soon. Uh, and it was she and I and uh, a quorum of one really doesn't work very well. No. <laughs> okay. And or, or it can work really well, but it doesn't work. You know, it's not, it's not uh, cross pollinating anyway. Right. Scott. So I'm looking for, looking for other members. Got it. Scott. Thanks, Kari. Um, and you found one, whether it's one you want to find is another matter, but uh, I'll be happy to join are you, Chris. Is that, is it, are you talking about Kari? No, I'm talking about you. No, I mean, I'm talking about me. <laughs> Who am I talking about? <laughs> Scott, very happy to have you, as always. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Be great. Thank you. And Chris, I'm the one you forgot. Oh, Mindy, um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but you know what? I won't forget again, of course. I used to be on the policy committee, so I, when I heard that you needed people, I was there. And if we still need me there, I will continue. I Please come. That It would be great. Thank you. Negotiations feel spurned, Mindy. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that, but no. We can, work, we can work out a loaner program, Jonas, if we need to. Do we need a motion? I think we, we might. I move to appoint uh, Scott Thompson to the policy committee. A second. Uh, what about Lindy? She's, she, she'll get her own motion, Scott. Okay, okay, great. Just okay. thought I was forgotten again. <laughs> it didn't take long. Wow, it was like 25 seconds. <laughs> Okay, all those in favor of uh, appointing Scott to the policy committee, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstention? Okay, so that passes. And, uh, and I, I, I move, move to that we please. appoint she who will not be forgotten again, <laughs> Lindy, uh, to the policy committee. Second. Second. No, she's just. 
All those in favor of appointing Lindy, please say aye. 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 Opposed, abstention? That passes. Okay, thank you both. Thank so you very much. Chris, you've got you've got critical mass here, and hopefully we'll get some additional members maybe out of our, our new group that's joining. Yeah, this is great. Thank you. And, great. And can I just, since you're talking about committee members, I just want to also put a plug in. Probably in the August meeting, we'll start. We'll also have to start thinking about uh, appointing a, a transportation subcommittee uh, for negotiations with the uh, transportation bus company. Okay. Thanks, Brian. All right, next up, we've got consent agenda. Um, can we get a motion to approve the minutes from May 19th, June 2nd, June 8th, and June 16th, please? I will move to approve the minutes of May 19th, June 2nd, June 8th, and June 16th, 2021. Second. Second. Any discussion? Before, yeah, before we vote, I would just like to uh, give special appreciation to Lisa, whose minutes are unbelievably comprehensive. Go look at other districts, see what their minutes look like. We are very fortunate to have Lisa. Amen. Here, here. Agreed. Agreed. I've been saying that for years. Any other comments? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, abstention. All right, so that passes. Aye. How about board orders? Anybody able to make a motion? <clears throat> yeah, I have them open. Um, I make a motion to accept the board orders in the total amount of $835,020.31. Is there a second? A second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? Okay, so that approved. Let's move on to personnel. 7.1, approve new teachers on page 244. I have those open if you want me to do it. Actually, there was a new email that went out earlier today. Yeah, please, Lindy. Oh, then make sure I have the right one open. Um, I make a motion to approve the new teacher nomination of Jeremy Avoli, a U32 physical ed and health teacher for the 21-22 school year. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? Okay, so that passes. And the other one I have on here is the long-term substitute, Maxwell Sagala, U32 English, long-term substitute for the 21-22 school year. Second? Se second. Thank you, Jonas. Any discussion? Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? That passes. Now, if I have the most recent, those are the only two on it, but I'm worried I opened the wrong packet. I, that's all. That's all I have. That's all of them. Okay. Um, so that, now moving on to the collective bargaining agreements. Uh, no, Brian. No. Actually, we have uh, two. Uh, there was a actually another motion. I was going to ask uh, if you, if I would be authorized to enter in, into an LOA letter of agreement sure. with uh, Lori sure. Bebo. Sure, I hadn't forgotten, but yeah, we can do that one now. So I'd entertain a motion to authorize Brian to enter into a letter of agreement with Lori Bebo. So moved. Scott. A second. Second from Chris. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. 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 Three nays, the ayes have it. Thank you. 
So now moving and, on to uh, Kari, I, I do have yeah. another motion. Uh, yeah, you know, do the because we're not going to be meeting in July. Uh, the uh, will the school board authorize hiring for positions in the budget, including school counselors, which are in the ESSER plan. Uh, so I, we still have some openings that we still have not filled uh, for the beginning of the school year. I anticipate uh, folks, my administrative team, con conducting interviews throughout the summer, and we don't want to lose candidates uh, for the start of the year. So uh, I would hope that the board will uh, authorize. Uh, that authorized the superintendent for hiring uh, positions in the budget, again, in the budget, including school counselors from the ESSER plan. Okay, and this would be um, hiring uh, between now and the next board meeting without our approval, correct? Yes. Okay, so this, would someone like to make that motion? Uh, I'll make it. So authorize the superintendent to um, hire new personnel within the budget covered by the ESSER plan. Is that more or less it? For positions in the in the regular budget, in the school budget, and also uh, including school counselors from the ESSER plan. Okay. For positions in the regular budget, as well as uh, counselors in the ESSER plan. Great. Thank you, Scott. Second? I'll yeah. second that. Chris, any Hold discussion? Hold on. Brian, how many, how many positions, potential positions are we talking about? Uh, right now, uh, I, I, I could, I, I know, I know of at least, uh, one or two positions at U32, one, uh, one position at uh, Calis. However, that could change. I mean, uh, someone may move or resign in the middle of the summer and we'll have to hire. I mean, those things okay. do happen during that summer. So it's, it's hard to imagine, but uh, we also do have a, a few counseling positions that we're, we're talking about hiring from our ESSER plan, uh, from the, our recovery plan using ESSER funds. And right now uh, there seems to be a lot of uh, agreement amongst uh, the members of the leadership team uh, and uh, the recovery plan planning planning uh, group uh, that we do need some school counselors uh, and so we're the exact number I don't have the exact number but uh, the, there's at least uh, a few I don't know if Lisa LaPlante is here if she's still here in the uh, audience today but I am uh, oh, maybe Lisa I can uh, can you answer help answer some of that question Sure. Thanks for having me. Um, right now, we're looking at increasing the all the school counselors in the elementary schools, with the exception of Rumney. Um, so Berlin, Callis, East Montpelier. Um, so Berlin and Callis would have a full time school counselor next year. Uh, excuse me. Berlin and East Montpelier would have a full time counselor next year. Um, so, right, hang on. Berlin would have two. Callis would have one. Doty would have one. Uh, Romney would have a 0.8, and we're looking to increase at U32 for an additional middle school counselor. Um, again, as Brian said, using the ESSER funds, so coming out of the grants, um, to increase the um, support around social and emotional learning uh, and increase the tier one curriculum um, aspects that we have to be able to go in classrooms and assist the, the teachers um, and along with the students and parents. So we do have applicants right now. We do have uh, interviews set for this coming Friday and hopefully uh, July 1st. So it would be really helpful to have the positions approved so that we could um, then offer the positions. There are many school counselor positions open in the state right now with limited, um, li limited candidates. So we are worried that having to wait until August would mean that we wouldn't be able to fill, fill positions. Great, thank, thank you, Lisa, that was helpful. Okay, so I see Jonas and then Lindy. Uh, um, I know that we don't have any uh, regular meetings scheduled in July, um, but I wonder if you know we could plan on you know, a very brief special meeting uh, to approve hires. I know that's not the motion on the table, I'm just trying to get a sense of the board. Um, well. Sorry, this is Steve. Yeah. Um, so my my inclination would be 
not to do it that way, Jonas, and support what I'm hearing from Lisa, um, that she wants the flexibility to be able to hire people as um, they approve them, as they feel they're qualified. And I get the impression that any delay could be detrimental to that process. I see Lisa nodding along with that. Yep. Well received. Thank you. Okay. So we'll leave that there. Uh, Lindy? Um, we heard specifically about the counselors, but I'm curious if all of these, like from what Lisa said, it sounds like um, a committee is interviewing in a typical fashion. So to find out if that's how the hiring is going during the summer, um, because I'm, I just, I'm a little uncomfortable. So that's what's yeah. my question. Well, I would not want you to feel uncomfortable, Lindy. Uh, so I, I just let you know that the we're going to be following the same interview process that we've been following for all of our teachers and appointees uh, throughout the entire year. Uh, so we have a committee at the school base, uh, and then there is a uh, referral to the superintendent where I do my own interview at the end, uh, and then we uh, typically uh, make the hiring recommendation. Okay. Do we have a motion on the table? Any more discussion? I have one more. I have another question, Kari. Um, yeah. um, is, is, the, is there a distinction between, well, are the, the, the counselors that are hired with the ESSER funds um, permanent employees or one year assignments? They're one year. They're, um, right now, they're in the moving forward grant as uh, one year assignments. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any last comments or questions? All right, I think we're ready to vote. So all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? <laughs> okay, that passes. Thank so you Brian, all. Are you ready to Good night, Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. Are we ready to move on then to bargaining agreements? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, I'll turn this over to uh, Jonas, who helped chair uh, helped chair our negotiations. This was a, uh, a a lot of work, a lot of late nights <laughs> from uh, from November till June. Uh, lots of conversations. Uh, in many ways, a labor of love, I would say. Uh, Jonas, Diane, Stephen, uh, and our uh, and uh, the, the teachers from the association on both the uh, teacher side and the uh, also the association members from uh, the ESP side. So uh, uh, again, uh, there's a motion here that's recommended, but I'll turn it over to Jonas. Uh, thanks, thanks, Brian. Um, I hope all board members have had an opportunity to review uh, the two draft CBAs. Um, you know, in addition to the the committee members and Brian. Uh, we need to thank um, Carla, we need to thank Lori, we need to thank Lisa Stout for taking the notes, we need to thank Melissa Tuller for keeping all the agendas together, um, you know, and, you know, everyone from both of the unions um, who, uh, you know, made, yeah, made this process, you know, challenging, um, but um, extremely rewarding. Um, I've learned a lot the last two years um, about what it means to be a teacher, what it means to be uh, an ESP. Uh, and I'm grateful for the uh, for the partnership and good faith of our friends on the union side. Uh, and I would move to approve uh, both the teachers and ESP collecting collective bargaining agreements uh, contingent on uh, union ratification in the future. I second that. Okay, great discussion. Um. Scott. Thanks, Kai. Um, Jonas had asked us to read through for um, typos, and um, the only one on in the ESP on 1.3, which I guess is page 247 of the packet, um, to the extent possible by statute. Mm -hmm. Nicely done. Thank you. But that's that's the best I could I could do before lapsing into unconsciousness. No, they are they are extremely tight. Carla has is all over this. 
just want you to know that I will check for things in a final format. <laughs> Very thorough. Okay, Diane. I just wanted to say I really appreciated all the uh, collaboration and the co colleagueship that was on both sides and the fact that we could also get a two year um, agreement was very positive. You're here. That's, that's really great. Any last comments? All those in, in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Or abstain? Okay, that passes. Great. Okay, so that leaves us with future agenda items. We have a list here. I heard at least two additional ones tonight. We've asked Brian for... Sorry, sorry, Kari, I'm very sorry. Um, when I was listening to people uh, to thank for negotiations, I neglected to mention Kelly Bushy. And I will not okay. be able to sleep tonight if I didn't uh, make that clear. Thank Absolutely. Thanks to Kelly. Um, so the two I heard tonight was um, Brian's report on a process for stakeholder input in developing a response to the curriculum review. And then Stephen's request for some time to, on um, the comparative financial data that we got tonight. Any other future agenda items? This is Diane. I would I would put on there both um, a review of social justice statements. Um, I know that's going to the to the policy committee, but I would say that should be an ongoing one. Also around um, Black Lives Matter. Also around climate check-ins of um, uh, uh, for us keeping a, a finger on the pulse of worries of assaults and. Uh, prejudice and bias that's occurring in our buildings. And then I also heard Brian say transportation subcommittee will need to be appointed. Thank you. Any others? How about some board reflection? How did it go so far tonight? Uh, I think you're doing an awesome job, Kari. I agree, Kari. <laughs> this was not easy to suddenly need to do this. So we should uh, surprise you like this every time. <laughs> <laughs> so well done. Thank you. Honey. I, I also wanted to say that I actually, as you all know, I was a proponent of the timed public comment, but I actually got more out of the public comment, having it be a little more. Um, focused than I have in the past. I actually felt like I was really clear on what people were asking of us. So I appreciate that. Um, is yeah. the timed, is that a permanent change? Um, I really think it should be um, because we're never gonna get through it in 15 minutes if we uh, allow it to be lengthy. So I, I think it should be. So if it's, if it's gonna be a permanent change, it can limit uh, we should have a system of a random pick of people, unless, you know, just to, to yeah. avoid favorite potential. Yeah, I, yeah. I agree. I was thinking about that, about how we deal with the, I agree with you that we had to do something about how people get picked. Um, right. so. It worked out tonight. Yeah. Um, right. I'll, I'll come up with a, a randomization format uh, for the future and I'll, I'll, I'll give that to Mark, um, you know, as, as he, as he gets started. Great. That's a great idea. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Jill, and everybody. I appreciate appreciate the uh, the feedback there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other oh, also, also, let me ask on that same point: Is there a way we can um, just instead of say instead of someone being cut off because that sounds it's brutal, um, have just say your time is up, thank you, and just have a have that done even if if we do it mechanically. Just because it's like all of a sudden someone's speaking and then there's silence. It's uh, it was a little startling the first time it happened. Sure, uh, Chris. One of the things that the timer app has is um, it has a um, it has an alarm that goes off, and so um, I had made the decision early to 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 cut the mic so that um, they wouldn't be talking into the alarm because I actually felt that would be equally disrespectful. But yeah. one of the okay. one of the things we could do is actually keep the alarm in place as they're finishing up their comment. 
um, I, I'm, I'm open to that as well. I'm, I'm totally flexible. Yeah. Okay. Good. Just, yeah. It was. Okay. Great. So we're yeah, doing reflections. Jonas. Yep. Well, Jim, I, I don't know if you could tell, but the, the, it looked like it took a long time for the timer to reset. This is just a technical issue, but like, so it wasn't always resetting. I think you were sort of keeping count, but uh, I'm not sure if that was a, like a lag or what was I think happening. it was a lag, yeah. So um, I actually had an internet outage here uh, in the middle of the, the early part of the meeting. So um, yeah, I was I was keeping track. And so it, what might not have been refreshing on your screen, but you know, from, from the minute I heard somebody's voice, that's when I kicked it off. And so um, there was one person in particular um, who had mentioned that they didn't see the time reset until they were about 35 seconds left. And so, um, you know, what I'll do the next time is I, I have a, uh, a different uh, mechanism for making sure that that goes off independent of, you know, whether or not my internet goes up or down. So we'll, we'll make sure that that's in place for the next time. Okay, <laughs> that's great. Thank you. All right, so uh, Jonas and then Diane. Uh, so I, as, as a proponent of a more open-ended and free-flowing public uh, uh, comment period, I have to say that I thought it worked really well today. Um, everybody was really concise. We got a sense of what everyone wanted to say. To say, uh, but I will note that we do have more public comments uh, coming up. Very good. Diane? So just, I realized, <clears throat> excuse me, somewhere we need to reflect that we have to discuss as a board um, our, our mode of meeting, if it's gonna be virtual or if it's going to be in person at some point. And I just wasn't sure if that should have become an agenda item or where that was. So. Seems like putting it on the future agenda items or, well, I don't know, maybe the steering committee should make a recommendation. Uh, the steering committee's talked about it, but we haven't landed on a recommendation yet. August seems like a good time to discuss it. Stephen. Yeah, just a uh, reflection on public comments. Um, again, it worked out tonight, but when we have lots of public comments, um, a discussion around how, how to prioritize um, in, in I don't I don't mean just randomization. Um, I'm interested in um, community members being being able to have a voice mm -hmm. um, and I, and I, I know that could could restrict or cause, staff members to have to wait but um I, th I think we should prioritize and staff members that are community members which i think most of them are is fine but i think we should prioritize community members having a voice if they show up hmm. good point any other reflections Okay. So we Sorry, have ten... Kari, um, yes, uh, can... forgive my interruption. Um, last time we said goodbye to Dorothy, but uh, she's still here. So <laughs> perhaps perhaps uh, it, it wouldn't be out of order to wish her um, a, a goodbye again, because I think this actually is it, Dorothy? Yes, it probably is really it. And I'll send a letter to, to Floor and then we can move on to another era. <laughs> we'll miss this one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank Dr. you so Dorothy. much, Dorothy. Dorothy, very much. Thank you. I yeah, we'll enjoy. miss you, Dorothy. We wish you well. Thank you. Thank you, Dorothy. We do wish you well. Thank you. Thank you, Dorothy. Thank you, Scott. Okay, so we have 10 minutes for public comments. Are there any guests Sorry. who want to speak? Okay. Sorry, Kari, this is Jonas. Just really yeah. quickly, um, I would like, you know, the, we've given you know, a round of applause for, for Lori, but I'd like to, um, you know, also just make sure that the board says goodbye to Lori and says, uh, you know, best wishes to the other folks who are departing from the district, including Kelly, uh, including Jody, um, and the other people whose names are, are escaping me at, at this late, yeah, Casey, thank you, and everyone else. Um, this this late at night. Oh, it's very good. Thank you. Thank you. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Uh, Lindy. 
That was exactly why I had my hand up. I felt like we had leadership team me members who were leaving and we hadn't publicly recognized their valuable contributions. Some of them have been here a long time and done a lot for this district. So I wanted to make sure we recognize that. Okay, now let's do public comment. Is there anybody um, from the public like to speak? I can't see anybody's screen at this point, so you'll have to uh, speak up or raise your hand electronically. I'm not seeing anybody at 9.18 p.m., so. Um, what they went to bed? <laughs> yeah, can you imagine? So um, there's still 52 people here. I think yeah. we need to take note of how many people have been coming to board meetings. Yeah. 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 Okay, so I think we're ready, uh, Chris. You have something? What? Hi there. Sorry, I just I know I don't want to take much of your time, but I wanted to just say from from a Calis resident. Special thanks to Dot for all that she's done uh, for the district. I don't need a timer. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. So why don't we um, get a motion to go into executive session for superintendent evaluation? So moved. I'll second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. So good night, everybody, and uh, we'll see you next time. Have a great summer. Thank you all. And Carla's coming too, right? Yep. Carla, Carla and Brian will join us. Yep.